<laughs> you ready? We're ready. I'm just waiting you to jump on so I can host. You all turned on? Check, check, check. Let's go. Let's go. Let's uh let's let's let it go on. Let's let it go. Let okay, let's uh it takes a while to sync up with uh with all the yeah, different channels, but right? Yeah, but uh let's uh wait a minute or two. Let's see. Oh, no, that was a little too much. Okay, wait. Oh, you're talking to your wife. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're on. The executive producer was making faces at me, <laughs> trying to flirt with me. When I talk to you, you listen. No, you you listen to me, cabrona. Whoa, whoa, we're getting, <laughs> getting personal here. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I said it when she's walking away, because she didn't hear me. <laughs> Are we w good? We live? Are we live, Tim? We, we live? We live? Hold on, hold on. Uh, yep, we live. I'm looking at my phone. All yeah, right. We live, we live, we live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Conversations with a DJ. I am DJ Brother Reese, and you are Tay. Oh, I'm Mr. Tay. You're <laughs> 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 supposed to introduce the guests first, right? He's, just, he's yeah. introducing no, everybody I, I'm, else. Dude, I, I, might, I, I might have to do this big. I wish I had an orchestra to do, do the introduction for this uh, next guest. All right, relax. This guy's. <laughs> relax. Uh, let me Calm see. The down. first time I heard his name was back in the days when uh, right after Cameron Paul left and he had a mix show on KMEL. What year was that? <laughs> that That's was that was 94. Really? That was 94. Yep, yep. 94. I was at K yeah, that, yeah, I uh, got to KMEL back in 94, but I was only there for 10 months. For 10 months? Mhm. Mm and then I made the switch over to Wild. So what made you go to Wild? The the <laughs> format? Uh by the way, my name is Jose Melendez. This He's is Jose <laughs> Melendez. <laughs> <laughs> he got all serious. What happened? <laughs> Dude, I, I'm a, I mean, what, what can I say about this guy? Just you don't know, you just read the t-shirt. Read the t-shirt. You guys know <laughs> this is, his name is, is uh, he's a legendary Bay Area DJ. The longest mix show DJ. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, okay. Can I yes. No, it cannot be disputed. It cannot be disputed. Because it Rick is. Lee. What's no. up, Rick Lee? I love Rick Lee. <laughs> we'll talk later, Rick Lee. But no, I, I, I have had the longest running mix show in the Bay Area. When Rick comes on, he can defend himself all he wants. No, right? no, I, you know what? I mean? I'm close to yeah, dude. I think that whole that that the the afternoon the workout, you know that that you started that right. We started well, that in uh, wild, well, technically right? Technically speaking, this is, so this is basically. So I was at Camille for about ten months, and you know at the at the time, um, you know. That at during that time, KML was the radio station for a, for a while in the yes. Bay Area, you know, and it was every DJ's dream to get on the oh. KML. Every DJ's dream, right. you know. So you know, I I did not become a DJ thinking I was going to turn it into a career. First and foremost, it was just like for all of us, it was just it was just a hobby. Okay. It was cool. So, so let's let's rewind a little bit. W when did you start DJing? At I what got, age? I got the bug. I got the bug in eighty nine. Eighty nine. Eighty eight. Eighty nine. And that was through one of my my best friends, one of my childhood friends. His name was Tim Martinez. Uh, his he his him and his cousins had a DJ crew, and that's how I got introduced to it. High school. That was yeah. I was there for the high what school. What high school did you go to? I went to Balboa High in Balboa, San Francisco. San so Francisco. that's how I. Okay. So that's how I got introduced to that, through 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 my through my friend Tim and his cousins. And so it for whatever reason it just looked so like wow. I've n I had never seen DJs up close. You know I'd listen to the radio and hear mixes, but you know even the school dances you never really paid attention to the DJ back then. But this was the first time I actually paid attention. I was like, wow. So I was hanging out with them and I'm like, I want to try to learn this. And I remember, I remember that, that, that Christmas, my mom asked me, what do you want for Christmas? And I go, I want two turntables and a mixer. And she's like, Bendel, we already got a turntable. Why right. do you need another one? You know? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like no, no, I'm, I'm trying to explain to her. So my sister Rosie was the one who actually went to go figure out how what it was that I was that I wanted she went to go talk to Tim and okay so she went back and explained to my mom what I wanted right so they literally went out 
and got me a pair of JVC direct drive turntables and a realistic mixer. Really? With the crossfader? With the crossfader. I no got the, way. With the crossfader. Oh, I got the with the crossfader. Fancy. Yeah, it was fancy. <laughs> you you know? were fancy. But of course, you know, you know, there was no YouTube back then and I wasn't surrounded by DJ, so it wasn't like I learned how to DJ right there and then. For me to even learn the basic concept of DJing took me over a year, literally over a year, because I'm like, wh how? how? I just couldn't understand it. Right. And all the equipment was at my house because we had the most room. Right. So everybody would come over to my house and DJ. And, you know, little by little, I started, oh, that's what that does. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, that's why you throw it in like this. So you got to learn some basic music knowledge, you know, right. basic music you know like a bar what's a bar what's a hook what's a chorus what's a downbeat what's a what's so a drum kit? do you play instruments or no nope, no nope, no nope, no nope, musical nope, training nope. they just kind of picked it up all along and you know me and my boys we started up our little dj crew and we started you know um you know we just started djing going out there and making our little money and we finally raised some money and we got some techniques wow. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I remember we we went to we went to Manor West and Pacifica to go buy our turntables. Wow. Okay, we went to Manor West. How much you guys paid for the twelve hundreds? Oh, it was definitely about I, I it was close to a thousand. Really? Yeah, they were pretty expensive. They were always been expensive. You know, I remember one time they were like three fifty a pop. Yeah, yeah. And now they're even more expensive today yeah. <laughs> because they don't make them anymore. So we finally got we finally got the. Uh, we finally got our turntables and we got a Newmark mixer. We got the we got we picked up the Newmark mixer with the sampler. Ooh, with the little sampler. So we got even more I fancy, think right? Something. <laughs> yeah, so we picked and we finally raised enough money to buy some speakers, you know, and an amp and we started going out there, starting doing bigger gigs and whatnot. But our DJ crew didn't really last that long. I would say that we had a good year and a half, two year run. We never became that big DJ crew yeah, that San we, Francisco was was well the Bay Area in general was known for having that mobile DJ yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, the mobile Because that's what I remember. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, I grew Jose. up listening. Like, a lot of DJ crews were actually around my area, yeah. you know. I mean, Style Beyond Compare, well, Spintronics, Spintronics yeah. Lifestyle, you know, uh, Unlimited Sounds, you know, a lot of sounds. I mean, you know, and of course, we started finding out about other uh, DJ crews out here in San Jose. Right. The big one that came out of San Jose, as far as I knew, was Skyway Sounds with Jazzy Jim. Jazzy Jim, you man, know, so, was, so, you know, we never became that, which right. was fine right, because right, right. Uh, as time went on, you know, my crew kind of started to break up school, work, girlfriends, all of that. You know, right. the gigs weren't coming in and, Damn, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> and we stopped doing gigs. But the DJ equipment was still at my house. Nice. Because once again, I had the most room. Right. And my mom was cool with it. Um, she let you guys play music? And well, my mom was cool with it. Um, my mom passed away about seven years ago. Actually, tomorrow is her seven-year anniversary oh, that she had sorry, passed brother. away. And um, so, but my mom was cool. With, my mom was really cool with it for the simple fact that I was home. Yes. And if we did our gigs, she knew what our, where I was at. Right. So my mom had no problem. She knew I wasn't out there doing God knows what with God knows who. Right, she right, was. Right. She completely supported it. And she's like, and at the same time, she's like, if this makes you happy, do it. Right. Because I know where you're at. Right. So I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> but I'm like, mom's cool with it. All right, great. So, you know, and so now I'm making my little mixtapes and I'm listening to KML and I'm, you know, but it wasn't anything that I expected to continue. Because now I'm like, okay, now I'm out of high school. All right. School, work. When you graduated? I graduated in 88. 88. Okay, 88. cool. I graduated in 88. So for the next couple of years, I'm trying to find myself. Technically, I'm kind of still kind of finding myself. But, you know, 30, 30 plus years later, I'm still trying to find myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I was, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm now starting to clubs. I'm so not, yeah. going, you know, clubs. I'm going to city nights and everything. And, you know, as I'm getting closer to 21 and, you know, being 21 and over and whatnot, you know, it's like, you know, Tim, his one of his cousins, his, one of his cousins, Mikey's like, hey, use my ID, you know, fake ID. I'm like, I'm not going to get in with a fake, with this. This doesn't even look like me. He's like, oh, let, let me, let's mess it up a little bit. Let's throw it through in the washer and dry. <laughs> so the very first night, 21 and over nightclub that I went to was this club called Club Mirage in San Francisco. Club Mirage. Tay, do you remember Club Mirage? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Do you so, remember Club Mirage? Were you old enough to get in Club Mirage? Club Mirage? I don't know. Graduated high school 2000. 
Oh, oh. okay. Then, yeah. So, so Eddie's like 10. <laughs> I, look like I'm, I, I look like I'm 48. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so, we gotta we gotta give it up, man. I, I gotta introduce to our uh, our our wonderful chefs. Chef Eddie, Eddie, Tacos, Eddie, Eddie. And, and Chef V, what's up? Hey, turn on your mic, man. Put yourself up. See, there we go. Dude, it's already started. Hey, we already started. We're getting right, excited. Right. We're, the Technical stories, difficulties, the great. stories are going to be rolling, yeah, man. Really so, weird. what do you got <laughs> planned for us? What, what, what you guys? What, 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 what you cooking, cook, man? Well, today we're doing a little bit of Asian Latin fusion. What? So we're going to start off with. We uh, like Latin Asian fusion, yeah. boy. You know? Let me tell you, <laughs> oh, bro, we <laughs> like that. So we got today is that uh. We have some spring rolls, but we made them like a ceviche style, right? Ooh. So it's going to have your cucumber, your jalapenos, your cilantro. Uh -huh. It has some uh, shaved onions, and it also has nice, nice. Uh, noodles wrapped in rice paper. So nice. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wait, big shout out to everybody on my uh, on Twitch. Uh, I see you guys. I can't really converse with y'all because we talking. But everybody up, on family? Twitch, thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. Yes, thank right? you, thank you. I see, I see y'all. I love your community, man. They're they're great folks, and a lot of them are our friends from back in the day, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you're making these spring rolls, hey. Bef I know before we started the, the show, we had actually the we did a, a shot. And what what was that shot that you made? Oh, it was amazing. Oh, <laughs> that was our Paloma shot. The Paloma King shot. Oh, and yeah, the it had a little bit of Spanglish asadero. Spanglish ah, asadero. On the rib, it, we made a little bit of uh, sugar spice and everything nice with habanero. Had a little, bring it to the, had, bring it to the camera. Had a little so kick this is one it. of our sponsors right here. Had a little Spanglish kick to it, asadero. Man. Had a little kick. Ha! Ha! Hey! You guys hey. gotta uh, <laughs> definitely support them and uh, check them out. You know, this is a wonderful company. They're based out of California. Latino owned, bro. Latino owned. Let's go. Let's you know do what I'm it. <laughs> what are they, pues? What are they, pues? <laughs> so, since we're talking about Latino owned real quick, yes, sir. I could actually do something. Yes. Um, Our. Our wine from day one has been 808 yeah. Beats. 808 yeah. Beats, speak These on it. These guys are dope. Who They're is awesome. that guy? So this guy right here, I'm he like, must be a jerk. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's like, where is he at? Is he exist? I'm like, oh, yeah, he exists. 808 Beats is here? 808 right Beats, here. the owner of 808 Beats. Down, Get over here, you bring man. a case, man? Did you bring a case or what? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my brother? How you doing? Welcome, man. Thank you so much hey, for sponsoring our show. Pleasure, man. Thank this you. This is Mr. Jose Melendez. Come on, kid. Day one, bro. Get on the mic and thank you, thank tell you. Us, tell us, yeah, let's talk about the wine, man. It, uh, it has an interesting name, 808 Beats. Explain. Only DJs and, and music lovers. Well, yeah, we're the only ones to get it because I didn't think you were a wine company. I'm like, 808 B's like, what, Reese bringing a production company into this thing? What's going on? A lot of people trip out on that. They say, like, hey, is, is this a, a area code, like Hawaii or what? And I'm like, you know what, that's good because it is, but it's not, you know? 808 beats has to do with the 808 kick drum of course the kick drum was the 80s and 90s you know the the beats that created through that thing and i know you're well versed with yeah, that yeah absolutely i mean um that was the best era the best music i feel and to this day even my kids you know they're listening to that music and it's coming back around so uh the passion that i have for wine and the passion that i have for freestyle and old school music comes from the uh, 808 kick drum yeah. Very nice, yeah. very nice. So, 808 beats. Well, well, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. What's all your social media, all your social media? How can our, our, um, our fans, our viewers, how can they order this wine? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Online at 808 Beats Wines, and that's beats with a Z. Okay. Wines.com, or uh, you can follow us on uh, Instagram. I have a link on there as well, at 808 Beats Wine, as well with the Check Z. it out, people. Yeah. Check it out. Oh, Facebook, so 808 good. Beats Wine. Check it out. I'm not a wine drinker, but I'll I'll try it. Try <laughs> okay, it I'll definitely it, try it. Okay, it I'm, not, I'm, not, it I'm not a you. wine guy, but I'll. Uh, uh, but I, I, I will try it. Just FYI, you know, I, right? I, I, just, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Angel of the original Cover Girls because she allowed oh, me to put her on what? the bottle. Yeah. What? So yeah, Angel, uh, her husband Latif, very good people. What? Yeah, Latif, Latif Ricardo, her, her manager, her manager. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's so, awesome. No, very That's good awesome. people, man. I got That's a lot awesome. of support from right, the freestyle right. community. We'll just keep that right there. there all right, 808 Beats. Yeah. All right. No, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, no, my pleasure. Man. No, thank yeah, you. Thank you. you for... Here I mean, we go. Show my age. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> well, we're the same age, too, I'm sure. What, how old are you? Oh, I bet you I'm older. How old? You first. 46, the one on 46. 51, oh, fool. Bro. 51. Still, still, bro. You know what I'm saying? Still good. He's still, yeah. he's still, he's still but, uh, That's it. But no, it's a pleasure, no, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is mine. Yeah. yeah. Pleasure is so. mine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate Thank you. Woo! Beats, ladies and gentlemen. Beats, Beats, Beats wine. Oh, drove down from uh, 
from Northern California, somewhere way out in the hill where he does all the. Where he I'm has all taking the, a couple bottles home, FYI. <laughs> FYI. Ooh. He's over there. He got oh. the whole crew listening right. to freestyle. Hold They're stomping on. on the graves. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait I'm going to try now. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to try now. All right. You going to try right now? I'm going to try right now. All right. Oh, First of all, old school Vato, don't try to start. It's always trying to try war. Always dude. instigate. That's not your. That's not your job to be instigated. That's call me Jans. All right, <laughs> old school Vato, sit down and zip it. All right, and hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Take a sip. Come on, tell us what's the verdict. Pinky out. Oh, 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 he's getting bougie. I'm taking three bottles home. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, <laughs> three <laughs> bottles. I'm taking three bottles. <laughs> We, a sangria. A sangria. Oh, oh. A yeah, yeah. yeah. Berries, limes, tequila, <laughs> and then we finish it off with the wine. Chef, can you turn on the mic? Yeah. It's on, right? Is it? It's okay. We good now? Can we good? Okay, do me a uh, Never can turn we repeat it off. that one more time. Okay, yeah. So what it's going to have, it uh, has blueberries, lime, a little bit of tequila, and okay. then the rest is all um, 808 Beats wine. All right. What I like well. about 808 Beats wine is that the flavors are awesome. But if you want to do some special drinks with it, which we have done all across the show, yes, yes, absolutely, it just turns out perfect. It's my favorite mixer for any kind of wine whatsoever. That's dope, man. This is amazing. Oh, you. So we do the dipping sauce is there. We have yes. a ponzo, ponzu, and then we have a sweet chili. Oh, this is good. Me, oh, this is, this. this is a great stream so far. We got alcohol, we got food. We got it all, man. It's a great show. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Jazzy Boo! He said he wants a bottle. He wants a bottle of the 808. All right, all right, all right, Jazzy Boo. You'll get one. I'll get you one. What up? Call me Jazz. Old school vato. T.I. Own. T.I. Own. What up, Red Dog? Red Dog. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, yeah. yeah do, do some of my peeps. Some of my peeps for my, for my chat. <laughs> You know so, where were, so where were we at? Where so were we at? Right now, because you know what? I, I, I want, this is the reason why we're having this show, is to have good food, good drinks, and good conversation. Uh, and now we, we, we graduated high school. You're finding your way. <laughs> You're making mixtapes. I'm making mixtapes. What happened so, next? So, like I said, now I get, now I, I've snuck my way into Club Mirage. <laughs> All right? No we, way. We, we, yeah. we snuck in. One night, we, we, I'm like, the fake ID, we're, we're in Club Mirage. And me and my boys... We started going. We started going. Now we were still doing. We were still like a, a DJ crew at the time. Right. So, um, you know, if we weren't gigging, we were at Club Mirage. Okay. We we stopped going to City Nights. I'm like, why are we gonna go to City Nights? We can go to Club Mirage and drink. Right. You know, I mean, and we were going there so often. We of course we became regulars. So the door guy got to know us. But then I so he's like, we know ID. We don't need no ID. <laughs> you know, we started going in. Who right. Was, who was the Who was the resident DJ? So at DJ? the time. The, a resident DJ was, this is the this is the one, the Bionic DJ, Doctor Randy Wong. He was the resident. Really, DJ. I yes. heard of that name. I yeah. never heard him play. Yeah. He he was the one. Now, we are now that we have been go, we have become. Did you just drop your party foul? And I'm the one who's drinking. Anyways, <laughs> um, so what had happened is that another DJ came in to uh, do Friday nights because Randy actually got another gig uh -huh. and his name was Mark Escalante. Uh -huh. And this is where things change and turn for me. Okay. So in what way? So we got we got to meet Randy and we got to know Randy. And then of course when Mark came in, we got to meet him because we, like I said, if we like I said if we weren't gigging, we're at Club Mirage week in and week out. We got to know the staff, they got to know us. We just came out to party and dance and all yeah. of that. And the majority of the time, we're hanging up at the DJ booth. Now the DJ booth was up on the second floor and Club Mirage had the the, the lower section. Right. So the DJ so we would always hang out upstairs near That's the DJ it. booth, right? That's the best view. You know, exactly. And then we got to know Mark. And then there was this one time, particular time where we had a bunch of gigs, back to back, right. back to back weekends. So we went, did our gigs, and then a few weeks back, we're back at Club Mirage, and Mark comes up to he's like, "Where you guys been? Where you guys been?" And it's like, "Oh, we had gigs." And he's like, "What do you mean you have gigs?" I'm like, "We're DJs." And he's like, "Really? You guys are DJs? This whole time I didn't know you guys were DJs." Like, "Oh yeah, we're we're DJs. You know, we got a small little crew. Blah blah blah." And for whatever reason, Mark and I started talking, and he's like, hey, I want to hear one of your mixes. I'm like, okay. 
I mean, I wasn't thinking anything. I was like, okay, I guess. So, you know, I went home and made him a cassette tape. Made, made, popped the cassette in, made the mix, went down, and the following me, I'm like, here you go. You know, young and dumb, didn't know better. Right. He's like, he wanted to mix. I made him a mix. You know, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, whatever. Okay. Here you go. What was all, Do you remember the mix? Hells no. no okay. <laughs> Hells no. I just made the mix. And then a few weeks later, like I said, we didn't go back to Mar Club Mirage because we had gigs. Right. And then when we finally came back, and I didn't leave, I didn't write nothing on the cassette. My name, my number, I didn't write no nothing. 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 I just, here you go. <laughs> you know, here you go. So he didn't know how to contact no, you. Exactly. So we finally came back, and he's like, at the end of the night, he's like, hey, Jose, I want to talk to you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's up? He's like, I heard your mix. Oh, what'd you think? He's like, it's really good. I'm like, really? Oh, thanks. All right. Appreciate it. And I was like, let me get your number. I'm like, so I gave my number. Didn't think anything of it. Did not think anything of it. A couple weeks later, this is where I feel in my life changed in this particular moment. I get a phone call. Hey, Jose, Marcus Galante. Hey, Mark, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. We're just yeah. talking. We're just talking. We're just talking. Question, you guys are working this weekend? You work Friday? You working Friday night? I was like, no, we're off. So you know where we'll be. You know where we'll be. He's like... Cool. He's like, cool. Bring a set. Oh. Set of what? Bring a 30 minute set. 30 minute set of what? He goes, a mix. 30, bring a, bring, he goes, bring your records. I'm a, you know, bring a 30 minute, put a 30 minute set together. Bring it to the, bring, come Friday. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was not clicking. None of this oh. was clicking. And he's like, I'm a, he goes, I'm a put you on. No way. What do you mean, put me on? He was like, Jose, I'm going to put you on. I want you to come and do a 30-minute guest DJ set at Club Mirage. Oh. That was, it uh, took me a second to really grasp what he was saying. You didn't hear the... Fur, 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 fur. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, I'm serious. Now, why is this so... And even in even in today's standard, it is very rare for any resident DJ, and I mean any resident DJ, to give some guy that he just kind of knows a guest set yes. at his residency in a major nightclub. Speak it is, on it. It is unheard of. It is completely unheard of. Like. The only time a guest DJ will come is if it's hired by the club or the right, venue. Right. But for some DJ to basically call and say, hey, I want to put you on. Not only that show me that he was, one, confident in knowing that I would never be able to take his gig. But for whatever reason, he felt he needed to do this. That's and to dope. this day, to this very day, I am beyond grateful and beyond humbled that he even had the thought of, hey, I'm going to give this guy a guest spot at my club, I, at my residency. I, I got to ask you, what year was it? Because I want to know, the, I wanna know the, this, the feeling of the music that you were playing. It's got to be in the early 90s. It, this was 91, 92. Oh, oh so, so like, uh, show me love, uh, push but, the feeling. But, but, yeah, so... So, I, so at this point, my, I call my boys, and I'm like, and I go, can I dump dip into the DJ fund because I need to buy some records because I'm doing a guest spot at Club Mirage Friday and my no, boys are like what? No what? way. How much you need? Here, take the whole fund. Here, I'm Go like ahead. no I don't. I took I, I basically got off. I took a couple days off work. I what? went record shopping. I went record shopping. I went record shopping. I mean from, and back then I probably spent a hundred bucks in, in vinyl and even in the early 90s. That's a lot of records. That's a lot of records. hundred bucks, you know. Yeah. And I went home and I started I started putting, you know, my mix together. I started putting my mix together. And then I'm like, okay. And then, you know, I got one of my milk crates. Yes. <laughs> and, the and we, you know, put the milk crates, right? And, you know, and put my headphones. And that night, we, you know, we get to Club That Friday night, we go to Club Mirage. And I'm calling everybody. I'm going to be at Club I'm doing a guest set. I'm doing a guest set. Come down. Come down. Come down. And uh, we get there. I get there. And, you know, we're like, okay. And I go up there and... <laughs> Well, it's like a movie. It was. And he was like, okay, I'm going to put you on at midnight. I'm like, oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. He's going to put me on midnight? Midnight, dude. He's going to put me on at midnight. Dude, you got your cherry pop at a major club in San Francisco at midnight. At midnight. Oh, my God. So, okay, so go ahead. Sorry. And then, you know, I finally get up there. Just touch 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is dope, dude. Go so ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right, so I finally go into the booth and I'm getting with the milk crate. I'm get, with the milk crate and I'm pulling out the records and whatnot and I'm stacking my records up. Yes! There. I'm stacking the records. I'm like, all right, I got my set. And he's like, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. And this was the very first time that he ever cut out the music Whoa. to make oh. out to make an announcement. First time, it's like he kills the music. I'm like, holy shit, he kills the music. And there's, it's kind of like dead silence because the crowd's yeah. like, hey, hey, hey. And I, I'm just trying to pick up the needle. Oh, and I can't even God. pick up the needle. I can't even pick it up. And he's like, he grabs the needle. And he, you all right? You good? You good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And he's like, okay, ladies and gentlemen. He gets on the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Club Barrage. You know, he's making this big announcement. He goes, Rem and I remember, he goes, remember the name. Remember the name because you're going to hear a lot about him. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get it up. My man, DJ Jose Melendez. So all my friends are screaming. Oh, hell yeah. First song, first mix. D-Nice. They call me D-Nice. Yes. Into Jackin' for Beats. Woo! Jack, 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 you know, Jack. So it could be, you know. So the cut didn't go in clean. <laughs> oh, no. I fucked up that first cut because I was just so. Oh, Jacket for Beats from Ice Cube? Yes. Oh, okay. oh I thought you were trying to play the BDBR. Yeah. No, 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 not Jack of Spades. No, Jack of Beats Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I would. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. in the beginning he goes, give me that. And he had yeah. that yeah. little jump in the beginning. The, the whole cut. My first three mixes, off. Off, 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 off. Mark comes in, grabs me, pulls me back, and he's like, yo. And I thought he was pulling me off. I thought he was, right. I was getting the hook. I thought I was getting the hook. And he's like, yo, relax. Have fun. And he pushes me back. And right when he did that, the half an hour went like that. Uh. I like to think I did. I don't know. I like to think I did. <laughs> After that, he calls me on Monday, and he's like, yo, whenever you don't have a gig, because I thought you did a great job. Bring a set, and I'll put you on. Really? Yes. He continued to put me on That's if I didn't sick. have it. So Mark Escalante. Marcus Escalante. Mark Escalante, I love you, brother. To this day. You hear that, Mark? If it, I mean, you are one of the, he's one of the key people why I'm standing here today. That's dope, bro. Yeah. That's dope. You know, in, 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 like you said, we in those days, we didn't have uh, YouTube or nope. social media. Nope, nope. I, I remember befriending uh, Jazzy Jim back in the day when he used to come to all the high schools and DJ, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I would just like want to help and carry the records or the speaker yep. and just ask him questions or, you know, eventually, the, you know, he would end up working at Upstairs Records, you know, right. And just to hear him, you know, practicing mm -hmm. doing his shit and then to give, you know, to take time and give you advice, you know, not too many people do that kind of stuff, you know, now I think he's, yeah. It's, it's a lot easier, but back I then... I, le I learned a lot. I mean, if I were to name off key people in my life who basically helped me with my DJing, first would be go, 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 first person would be Tim Martinez. He was my best friend. For sure. Still is my best friend. He's the one who introduced me. Miguel Cuadra, his cousin, who, who I kind of like looked at as far as a DJ. First time I ever saw. Right. You know, and then, you know, Marcus Galante for giving me my first club gig. DJ Prince Ice and Alex Mejia for actually getting me on my first radio guest spot. First radio guest spot because of Prince Ice and Alex Mejia was on the King Tech and Sway Wake Up Show. Sure. That was my very first guest spot on KML. You played on the Wake Up Show? My mix played during the first hour of the Wake Up Show. Oh, that's Which I didn't sick. know. Really? Yeah. Get out of yeah, here. King Tech's mom is right in the corner up the street. King yeah. Tech, man. King <laughs> Tech. We'll say, Dude. thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and then Randy Wong was the guy who actually brought me into Club Mirage, who gave me my first actual paying gig, because everything I did with Mark was not a paying yeah, gig. Yeah, yeah. So Randy Wong was the one who actually got me into Mirage with as a paying gig. And those individuals... Oh, and my boy uh, Dino Rivera from Spintronics, the first generation Spintronics. Um, How many generations are there of Spintronics? I think three or four now. Three or four? So, yeah. Yeah, they, they started they, in the they, early 80s, yeah. dude. Yeah, so Dino Rivera from, Spin, from first generation Spintronics, um, he really helped me with basically helping me solidify my 
technique and mixing, I guess, way genre formatting my i mean i learned a lot from i learned a lot from all these djs i learned how to read crowds from mark and and randy i right. you know i learned just basic mixing from my boy tim and and mike and um and miguel and so you know all these little key people in my life is why i'm still here that's so dope dude. yeah yeah because when i met you when i was at wild uh, it was just so dope to see you do your, your your mixes. And what I loved about it, you would record it, too. And then whoever won uh, the contest. Oh, yeah, and yeah, And at the yeah, end, I'm that, like, what are you doing? And you're like, I, I, you know, so I'm recording your mix. That was that, Renee Taylor's uh, that was idea. Sick. She's like, Jose, can we record the mix? I'm like, yeah, I guess. She goes, yeah, we're just going to give it away with whatever other prizes. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. That's Not thinking dude, that's <laughs> that huge was, marketing dude. right exactly so what yeah. a way to build your fan base exactly so i would just basically put it pop into tape i would record it then i would give it to the intern and then, then they you would basically ship it out yeah. yeah ship it out so yeah I, we we did that for a, for a while you know and then of course eventually i started putting out my mixed cds and things of that nature so yeah dude, that's crazy man that's yep. what what a, what a history let's, let's talk to chef because i see i mean i don't what are you doing bro what do you what do you got over if you here? can see these you're about to see yeah, these tacos because oh they don't look like oh your normal God. tacos man these, 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 these things look major spanglish asadero is in the major. house major what do you got for us chef what we got here was bao buns which was really popular in china okay it probably seemed like a lot of pork uh tarts you, uh uh huh. But what we did is that we actually got the bow buns and we kind of twisted it a little bit of Latin. Oh, bow buns! Woo! Latin Asian fusion, y'all. Yes. <laughs> we toasted them on the grill. Uh huh. Well, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. <laughs> I'll get, don't worry. I got, I got you. I got you. Let's, 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 take, let's take care of the tech guy. Let's, let's take care of the tech guy. Let me see it on the camera. You want to see it on the camera? Look, look, look at that. Look at that. Latin Asian fusion, people. Look at that. It's amazing. That looks amazing. Dude, that looks good. Right. Oh, that's for you. The char siu chicken. Who, who's looking out for you? Who's looking out for you? <laughs> Which is really popular in China, but we did it with a little bit of Mexican flavor, the pico de gallo. Gracias. Oh, I can like I that, some bro. Yeah, can I get a napkin over here? Because it's going to get, get messy. Oh, it's going to be fun. Oh, my God. All right. So why don't you talk for a few minutes while yeah, I yeah, my Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to take a bite. Because, <laughs> you know, you just... Hey, I, one of my... Um, uh, I have a, a cool ass memory walking into DV8. So for those of you that are, oh, are, are, we are got old stories enough, about DV8, DV8. Boy. <laughs> it was a Saturday night, and I remember walking in there with Albert Campo and all, you know the San Jose crew. Oh. And uh, what I loved about the main room at DV8, they had the communities. Remember back in the nineties, mm -hmm. the communities were the shit. Mm -hmm. And I remember you playing. Uh, I think it was an EFX track. Uh, is it like my dildo? Let me stop you right there. It wasn't a Saturday night. No, was it Saturday or Friday? Friday night. Friday night. Okay. Friday night. But you were playing in the main room. I was playing main room on Friday nights, and then I was up on the second, okay. second so, floor on hey, Saturday nights. Y'all just gonna skip over the fact that Reese said dildo just now. <laughs> that's the that's the name of the song. That's the name of the song. Is it like, is my, it like dildo? my dildo oh. by DJ EFX? EFX. And yeah, that's nothing to us. Maybe for <laughs> you. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that's the name of the record. Dildos, vibrators, <laughs> vagina, <laughs> penises. Let me know when you start getting uncomfortable. Um, three ways, bondage. Dirty Sanchez. Dirty. <laughs> Bukaki, <laughs> menage a trois. <laughs> it's still open. Is it? Oh, how would you know, Mister Mister Righteous? Because Mal was talking about it. On the Mal, why would you been there? <laughs> he, he, I'm sorry, but the production guy, he, he's not on the adult level right now. We, we, okay, we're, we're all adults here. We're all Dude, adults. Dude, this looks right? so good, man. This is so good. Hey, Chef, I know you've been traveling a lot um, this past week or a couple of weeks. I know you were in Los Angeles. You're out there, right? I was Doing in big LA cooking for uh, all these companies I cook for are all billion dollar companies. Okay. So oh, let's be nice. Right? <laughs> there was one in LA. There was. Show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there was one in uh, Arkansas. Uh -huh. I got New York coming up. I got Texas coming up. And of course, I got here in San Jose that I yeah, kind of yeah, do too with my main job. Yeah, that's dope, it's, man. I'm loving it. It's, it's an experience that I never thought I'd be able to 
have and, and I'm you know, blessed every single day. Congratulations, man. Thank That's awesome. Thank you very much. So yeah. when you go out to the other areas, you go taste their, the local cuisine, like what, what the flavors, like, you know, do you oh. go try to taste their vegetables or, you I know, try to taste or meat? everything, I mean, and I, I'm a big history junkie. Oh, that's History, dope. like when you use with music, or music junkie, food uh -huh. junkie, and history junkie. So when I write here about history, uh -huh. I love it. I soak it up. So, like, I was telling you guys earlier about that place in Arkansas right. where they had, like, it was 1941 when they opened, and uh -huh. then they had a whole little separate restaurant, underground restaurant for all the black people. That's crazy. And it was cool because I was like, wow, that's just, this is just amazing to even hear that, like, right. to be part of that, to be in the same building. Right. So it was just a great experience that I got to do. So things like that, that I would rather do that than go to, like, any five, you know, five-star restaurant just that's, because of the history there, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that, I mean, roots, right? Exactly. You're going to finish your dildo story or what? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, gonna... yeah, 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 but I'm sure <laughs> you're going to uh, the club. I, mean, yeah, well, I want to know how the story ends because so, so far he starts the stories and he doesn't end them. And that's, <laughs> that's irritating as hell. <laughs> so you walked into the club. And we playing. got we got drinks, but I just remember that whole night you were just playing I mean, that, that era, man, in the 90s, I mean, the record that came out, mm -hmm. right, with just the, the energy, that's when everybody would dance. I Just, you would dance. I agree. I agree. I miss those days. But I, it was cool, man, just watching you work the room, man, because I think a lot of, there's a lot of, there's, there's DJs that don't know how to work a room. And when I say that, I mean, it, the music and the lights and the vibe has to go together. There has to be a certain energy in the room. You know, you and I can play the same record, but the way we present it, it's it's a feel. It's a I, feeling. I agree. Um, and this is where I basically uh, give a lot of credit to Randy and Mark, because, like I said, my first club experiences were through them. And Randy, especially, Randy, especially, as fast as he would talk sometimes, because I'm like, slow down, what did you say? <laughs> you yeah. know, he was really specific on... Helping me read a room, and I and it and it took me such a long time to under to really comprehend reading the room, and he's like, you know, because he was the first one to teach me how to, hey, when 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 you have to basically kind of like break your night down. You got your opening, you got your peak, and you got your closing, and this and this and that, and and you know you got to learn how. You got you got you got to sense when the crowd is getting tired. You got to sense when the crowd is ready. You got to you got to learn how to drop certain songs at certain times to get the ultimate reaction. Right. He's like you got to really. He goes not don't don't be just up here looking at the turntables and mixer. Right. Literally look at the crowd. Right. And I at in the beginning I'm like I am looking at the crowd. You know you're not no. looking at the crowd. You're looking, but you're not really looking. And I'm like, man, stop with all this backward ass right. talk. But one he was day, right though, man. one night, you know, that I had this one night where I was just dropping all the hits. Just hit, 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 no reaction. Zero reaction. No reaction whatsoever. And also, I'm just kind of looking at this crowd. I was like, okay, well, I'm dropping all the hits, but no one's really reacting. Let me try to play something different. That was it. Nothing. Let me grab this. No particular song. Right. No. Something different. As far as the genre was concerned, and I can't even tell you what I was playing, but I decided to just switch up the direction of the music, try something different that they haven't heard in a while, haven't heard or whatnot, and let us see where that goes. I threw something in. They reacted. Okay, let me try something close to that. They reacted. After a couple more reactions, then I dropped a hit and it explodes. And I'm like, and I remember going, that's what he means. <laughs> that's what he, I get it now. Yeah. I get it. 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 I think some of the great DJs that are the ones that can play in the clubs and do the radio are able to to go between different genres and, and know how to feel the crowd. Yes, that's absolutely. A, that's an art to absolutely. itself. And you don't you don't learn. You mean it takes you a long time to hone that skill. It does. It does. I mean, you know, I I, I, mean, I think even with technology today, you know, you can learn how to be a DJ today. With a lot a easier. You know, absolutely. You know, you can have access to all the music, to all the equipment, and everything, but. You know, and any DJ, and I, and I, I was like, any DJ could walk into a packed nightclub, drop hits, yeah. and look like you know the shit. Right. 
And to a degree, yeah, that's cool. Almost any DJ. And I'm, gonna say, I'm not saying every. I'm just saying almost any DJ can do that. But it really takes an actual DJ who knows the art form of it to walk in at the beginning of the night, start the night, get the dance floor going, get the dance floor going, rotate the dance floor, because, you know, people are still there to drink, and you got to be able to clear the dance floor, shoot them. that? You hear that? Clear the dance floor to shoot them to the bar, give them the break. Hear that, DJs? Look at this. He's spitting game right now. <laughs> I've been telling everybody about this. It's like, if, D, if DJs are scared that. to lose the floor, they're not really thinking about the entire night. I have no problem clearing the floor. In fact, I will clear the floor on purpose just to reset yes. my night. You I know, love that. and yeah, you actually got to work with the venues like you, you know, you, you drive them, you get them hot and sweaty and they go to the bathroom, they take their breaks, they go to the bar, they spend money, they get drinks back on the dance yes. floor. So if deep when I, I, and I've seen a lot of DJs like, I don't want to lose the dance floor. I'm like, it's okay to lose the dance yeah. floor. The thing is, can you get them back? Right. And that took me a long time to basically learn and okay, lose them. Bring them back. Lose them. Bring them back. Now, if you can keep them, cool. But if you can rotate them and keep them, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of that mentality and thought that today's DJs don't have, which is unfortunate because I think there's a lot of good DJs today, right? Who really have missed out on the whole culture of DJing and right. and learning how to. And this and not, I'm not mind just talking clubs. We're talking. Birthdays, quinces, weddings, right. all that. I right. mean, you know, it, it, it really, like I said, to me, it really is an art form of being able to walk into a crowd, look at it, look at the lay of the land, and you start. And from that minute, like I said, there is no actual song that you start with. There isn't no magical song that you start with. You just start. And you see how the crowd reacts, and then you feed off of that. And then once you get them, then you can experiment. Then you can start dropping shit that no one's ever yeah. heard or something different or whatnot. And you can still drop the hits and still drop their favorite songs and manipulate the music and whatnot. And if you continue to keep the floor, at the end of the day, you know what you're doing? You're actually DJing. Actually, DJ. <laughs> hey, how many hours would you DJ at a club? Cause a lot of people don't understand. Cause I, I tell, I go, for me, they, they might, they say you're a turntable hawk, cause but I'm so used to playing five to six hours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I like mean, a norm. Oh, no, 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 no. When <laughs> I wanna, you, um, that was norm. Deviate where I can honestly say a deviate in San Francisco, which is now called Temple today in San Francisco. So that's De the Temple. That's Temple. Nice. Deviate back in the day. I would st on Fridays. I basically would do uh, midnight to three, and we would do a live broadcast. That's right. On Wild uh, at the time. Uh, so I not, about those. So so not only was I DJing in front of a club, I was live on the air because we would run an Double ISDN dipping, line baby. straight from the club to the radio station. And midnight to three every Friday, I was live on the air from the club. That's and dope. the only other DJ that I know that ever did that on a regular basis. Was Cameron Paul? Cameron Paul when he from was City, City Nights. Nights. Yep. And other now wow. other venues have done that, but I'm talking about his consistency. I did that for two years, and no other DJ that I know has ever basically live broadcasted on a radio from a club. No more, you know, other, you know, on a consistent Can basis. Can we talk about the power the radio stations had back then? Back then, yeah. Oh my now, God! Now, technically speaking, I'm still in radio. Right, I'm still right. on Wild. It's just a different feel. Right. But yeah, back then, in the 90s, radio controlled the direction of the streets. Bottom line. It, it, it controlled the music. It controlled the trends. It controlled everything. Not to say it doesn't have somewhat control today, but back then, if you didn't hear it on the radio... Then what what I loved about it is like when the mixers we would bring these certain yeah. records to the mix show you know coordinator it would be like you know oh, you, yeah. would, you would be like the spokesman for right, all of us right, right. we're you like know. they're playing this in San Jose they're playing this in, over here they're playing this and then the, we present it to, to my Jim. very first program director Michael Martin he basically came into the mix show meeting one day he's like look you guys are the eyes and ears of the streets okay. So, and he was adamant. He's like, look, fuck all these other radio stations. Right. Fuck them. All right. Completely fuck them. 
if they beat us on a record, if they act, beat us on any record, whether it be a dance record, a hip hop record, right. if they beat us on a record, do you know what that tells me? That tells me that not only are you guys lazy, you guys don't give a fuck. Right. And we're sitting here going, holy shit. <laughs> well, like, he's a DJ too. Yeah, though. He yeah, gets yeah, it. yeah, yeah. He's he, like, look. He goes, it, it, he goes, no DJ and no radio station and no club should be beating us on anything. I don't care what the genre is. I remember when we beat KML in the ratings. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. We, we, back then in the mid-90s, I mean, Wild took over. And, you know, and like I said, when I, I, was, like I, said, I was at KML for 10 months. Right. That was my dream. Right. Okay? Of course. Bottom, that was my dream. My dream to get onto KML. That was my dream. When I came into KMEO, I found out later that one of the main reasons they hired me was because I was a very, as to what we would describe, an open format DJ. That's crazy. Because okay? we... We, I played everything. I played everything. I played everything. Yeah. I played hip hop. I played old, I played dance. I right. played freestyle. Right. So you were the, a DJ. I was a DJ. <laughs> yeah. But KMEO at that time was starting to go through its change from a from top dance. forty station, yeah. a top forty station into what they are I today. Remember. You know, a hip hop R and B radio station. And they're an incredible radio station today. But during that time they started switching. They started changing. Wild came in and nobody saw Wild. Nobody saw Wild come in. Michael Martin came in as the new program director, flipped the format, flipped the signal, flipped flipped everything. Flipped everything, and it was Wild 107 at the time. And eventually, they got bought out, and the signal and everything. But that's a whole different story. He came in with the mentality: "Is like, look, we got to basically create a sound for the Bay Area, all right? We have to create a sound for the Bay Area, and this is Ground Zero. And you guys are basically my soldiers. You got to go out there." So he was a great motivator. And at that time, I'm like, fuck yeah. So, you know, me, we would go, like, every DJ who was in the mix show, all right, that's our, that's, if that's, if that's the goal, then we were hitting the record stores three, four times a week. Uh, yeah. Looking. <laughs> just pulling out records. I would go records, to club. Looking. I, I would just, like, try to keep my ear out. You know, out. And, and it was almost, uh, it was almost like whoever had come to the mix show meeting with a new record and beat somebody, you know, it was almost like a contest. It's like, what'd you find this week? What'd you find this week? What'd you? And at I times, like, bringing I like, summer junkies. I was like, I'm not, I'm not telling you what I found. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, you're yeah, just gonna have to hear it. You're just gonna have to hear it in the mix. You're yeah. just gonna have to hear it. You want to know what I found? Hear it in the mix. Because Michael Martin, at the same time, gave us so much freedom to play. Right. He's like, he goes, I'm not. I don't know these songs. Is it hot? Is it hot? I'm like, it's hot. And I like to think that if. I had five records, four out of five were the ones got into mixture rotation. I like to think that I had a very good average of right. bringing songs and right. music to right. the table. So, so you know, and there were times where I did hold out. Every DJ in our mix show meeting held mm. back records because we didn't want, I didn't want you to be the first one to play it. I was like, ah, oh, no, no, uh, what'd you find? No, I didn't find anything this week. Come Monday, I was going to wreck a racket uh, uh, and start playing it, and all of a sudden, you know, oh, everybody, the, fuck. Uh, like the, the 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 private line, the private line would be like, "What's that? What's that? What's that? What is Jose playing? What's Jazzy playing? What's well, you know, who who what's they, oh what are they playing? What are they playing? You know?" And then the I'm like, "Good old days, you know." And Ren, 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 Renee Taylor, Renee Taylor, St. John, you know, right. they get on to, they get on the air and you know basically play, you know, name the record and whatnot. And right when we hear the record, we're like, "Fuck, gotta go to the record store." Hey. You got this record? Hey, you got yeah, this record? You have to get it because the whole Bay Area will jump on it, right? Yeah. And after a while, you know, we all started playing nice and we were right. being cool with each other. And we're like, all right. But every record store in the Bay Area waited for what we dropped. Not any other radio station, what Wild dropped. If Wild dropped it, those records were being sold left and right. And I remember when I was working at Ultrasound Records in San Bruno. Uh, I worked for a record store. Um, what, shout out to my boy AJ, DJ Ajax, yeah, and his Ajax, brother Robbie. Right. I worked at Ultrasounds for a little under two years. And, you know, this is right. And I started working there right when I had made the switch from KML to Wild. Wild. Okay. So now I'm working at Wild. I'm working at Ultrasounds. And we're sitting there. And in the beginning, I was, you know, I would come back from our mix show meetings. I'm like, yo, AJ, we need to 
buy some we need to get these songs we need to get these songs we need to get these, get these songs and he's like well i don't know man i don't know my know aj just trust me <laughs> and after a while after every mix show meeting the next morning he's like what do we need to get what do we need to get i'm like we're gonna be playing bucket heads we're gonna be playing the juice we're gonna be playing is it like my dildo we're gonna be playing all these songs we're gonna be already the one man party angelina oh. boom 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 I'm over and it, all that and he would call the he then he would call his distributor it's like yeah i want to order four cases of this three cases of that his like his orders would start really small but after a while he's like i want five how many cases of this you got i'll take them all and the distributor was like really really he's like yeah we'll, we'll take them all he already knew that and and literally we it would take a truck to go over there pick up 30 cases of records bring them back to the set and and like come friday thursday friday saturday ultrasounds was packed all the djs buying the music for the weekend because of the simple fact that i kind of had the inside track yeah right and the record and the, and the record guys, the, the distributors were like, yo, man, I can't give you all my copies because all these other, you know, I got right. my other clients. Right. Now. Well, okay. Well, we'll leave them one case. Right. We'll leave them one case. Not a biggie. You know, we're, 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 we're just in it. And AJ finally realized him and his brother finally was like, okay, Jose, what do we need to buy? And I would bring him our mix show list. The grid. The, all this. <laughs> all this. You see that? Get all this. Scotty Fox said nobody else. Yes, yes, Scotty, Scotty Fox. Hey, Scotty Fox worked. Scotty there? Fox worked. He worked at Ultrasounds when I left. When I left, because I eventually uh -huh. got so busy with Wild and my clubs and whatnot, I couldn't do it anymore. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm busy now. Right. Because I finally got offered the workout at noon, and that really took a lot of my time. So I left. So they brought in Scotty Fox. Well, Scotty also did the the. Scotty Fox was with with Top, Wild. Uh, he did. Uh, he was with Wild, but he also did Top Secrets. Yeah. He. Yeah. Yes. He Dude, did. Dude, those things saved my back. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Fox, incredible editor of all He's kinds. He's fucking I'm badass. Mad. Hey, you, I'm gonna have you next on our show, Scotty. I'm gonna hit you up, bro. You're yeah. next, bro. We yeah, gotta get Scotty him. Fox. Love you, bro. Yeah. So yeah, no. <laughs> at, at one point, at one point in the Bay Area, no record store, and I'm talking even Tower Records. I'm talking nobody outsold ultrasounds because of the simple fact that Scotty was with working with Wild. Right. I was there and I still had, I'm like, I would still, even when I wasn't at working at ultrasounds, I'm like, oh, AJ, order these, order this. Here, here's the mix show list. Dude, we, we controlled it. And I think, and the mix show definitely helped build Wild to what it is today. Yeah, because to me, when I went, uh, you know, up and coming in San Jose, that was the, the goal was to get become a resident DJ at a club, have a mix show on a, on a radio station, right? That was like the dream. And then to work at a record store, oh my God! I yeah, I, I, I went the other way. I, I worked at, I had, I had at a, a guitar center, but I didn't work at a at a record store. So that was that must have been fun, man. Working at Ultrasounds also was very pivotal for me. You mean a lot of heads, right? I can imagine. Well, yeah, and at the same time, you know. Just musically, I felt I was ahead of the game. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh. I'm talking with my mouthful. But, yeah, I felt it was very pivotal for me because I felt I was ahead of the game. You know? Did you and get it, it? Did, it did pay off because I went from basically mixing three nights a week to every night. <sighs> every night. I remember a good three-year stretch where I maybe had... I would, the only times I actually didn't work was when I was going to the Winter Music Conference in Miami. Wow. <laughs> Other than that, if I wasn't DJing, I was at the radio station. And if I was at the radio station, I was home sleeping. And if I was home sleeping, Dedication. then I'd, I'd be work, you know, I'd be recording. I'd be, you know, there wasn't a moment, I would say between 95 and early 2000, I can honestly say I don't think there was a time. I wasn't doing something right around my Mu m m at music, this point. What I finally, finally realized it was my career. Yeah, it was like this finally turned into a career. I I went from DJ is kind of cool. This is cool. This is my livelihood because for the very first time in my life, I actually felt I'm actually kind of okay at this. Not good. I know good DJs. I know great DJs. I know incredible DJs. Me, I'm like, I'm not too shabby. I can actually make this work. 
I can actually make I can actually make a living out of this. I mean, it's been like three yeah. decades, I dude, mean, right? It's I, been like tw- l- over 30 years, right? Ultrasounds was technically the last, as you want to call it, nine to five job I ever had. Wow. Okay, that was the very last nine to five job I ever had. I have basically been DJing and living, making a living off of DJing since, you know, since the mid 90s. Wow. So when the pandemic hit, how, how did that, I mean, how did that, Ooh. you know what, I man? Let's, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about oh, the pandemic. Oh. I really got to look at this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you got over What is this? <laughs> what is this, man? The what? Oh, okay. Eddie. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Let, me bring, let me bring this. This is kind of amazing. Can you see that? Can you see that? Look at that. You see that? You see that? Okay. Please explain. Explain what is this. So, um, with our company at Well Food Creations, what we like to do, we like to play with our food. Mm-hmm. So, we actually always make homemade tortillas, different flavors. We've done poblano, jalapeno, we've done turmeric, we've done... A jalapeno, or we've done Fresno chili, you know. Um, but B actually has mastered his tortillas better than I have. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So what she did is what's the what's the one that you did on there, B? Uh, oh my God, so good. <laughs> so she did like a goju jang tortilla with sriracha inside the tortilla, and then we have a bagogi uh, marinated uh, short rib right there. And then on top of that, we have some pickled uh, carrots and jalapenos, kind of like you find in your actual banh mi. And on top of that, we have Spanish um, pickled onions right on top of that. So it's got a whole lot of different flavors going on. A little spicy, but I'm good. I'm all good. Right. I'm all right. The tortilla is what's giving it the spice, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> I'm feeling it, but it's all good. Right on. So we'll do the next one without uh, the jalapenos either. For yeah, But you know what? We like to have fun with our food. And this is a way to show our personality and show our styles. Everything that we do is mainly from scratch. And um hope you guys enjoyed. Mm. Wait, but we get to wait to the final, final, final thing. It's, it's like, you know, super like Asian Latin cuisine seven course meal over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Chef, what 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 inspired you to do this this uh, this mix that you did for us today? Uh, you know what? Because I remember you telling me you liked Asian food one time. Oh, I love it. I'm Asian like, you know food. what? Like, let me do a little bit of a twist on it. You know, knowing that, you know, we're all Latinos right here. Yeah, yeah. So Spicy. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and boom. It's getting something to I, talk I about. I love that mix, man. Because it, you know what? You could get taco, regular tacos anywhere. Yeah, you could yeah. get regular. You Yo, know. give the people your your, your social, man, because this is amazing. Yeah. Man. Well, thank you so media, much. Man. Give them well, the social media. If, if they want to hire you, bro, what do what, yeah, what, what, what they? Where, did, where, where are they, can they get this? Well, you, you guys could find me. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He's got the. Our uh, huevo food, uh, huevo food creations. Our uh, uh, huevo food creations. creations. I'm on Instagram. It's kind of a long A underscore, but <laughs> you guys could find me. I'm all over the place. I- I'll tag them. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, thank you so I'll much. Uh, we, we have the links on the yeah, on, yeah, the, <laughs> on the show as well. We'll, we'll tag them. There you go. Hey man, uh, this is delicious, bro. This is amazing. It was okay, so good. good. So no extra spice. Oh, okay. All right, oh, all right, all right, all right. You got to try it with no spice? Yeah, no spice, man. You know, I mean, I, I know I'm Salvadorian, but, man, I'm not. You're Salvadorian, bro. That's, that's right. right yeah, oh, he's oh, a papusa yeah. like me, bro, and my mojo. He actually made um, a quesadilla, like, dessert last last time. It was off the hook. It was bomb, bro. Now they hooked the cheesecake. Yeah, it was real good, people. It was real good. We do. Uh, next time I got to make you some. You had my pupusas before. Mm-hmm. They were vegan too, right? He made vegan pupusas and they were delicious, man. Yeah. We'll say that on, <laughs> we'll say that on air. Yes, <laughs> we did. And I'm okay with it. It's cool. Oh, oh, okay. did, you, did you like the 808? The I'm taking a couple of bottles with me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh Go. You got a case? <laughs> Don't be threatening me with a good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the case, dog. Hey, maybe you could drink it on the on your on your Friday show. Yeah, yes. I'll take a case. Seriously, I'll I'll tag the fuck out of you too. <laughs> Eight oh eight beats. Hey, you know what? Um, 808 beats, whoa! Whoa, 808 beats, whoa! What you talking about? What you talking about? 808 beats, whoa! You know, look, 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 right, right. 
look, look, look at the name. Endorsed. Endorsed. I mean, paid for it, too. I mean, that's, that's love. That's love endorsement right there, right? 808 beats, foo. You know what? Uh, record, every time I hear it and where I play it, it reminds me of that time that we're at Wild Together was that Selfish track. Oh. I remember you used to play that. I love that song. But that <laughs> reminds me of you. Can, I, that's where I learned it from you. Story. You want Seriously. a story about Selfish? I love that. Okay, let's talk about how you bring it on to the, the mix show. That was, was that a okay, modern no, no, record? No, no, I'll tell you exactly. So, I want to know. The name of the song is called Selfish. The name of the group is called The Other Two. The Other Two. The Other Two. All right. So it wasn't me. It was not me. DJ, please. I associate that record with you. I didn't know that no, was... No, no. Well, see, here's the thing. So... <laughs> oh, what's so, up, please? DJ, please. That's our or brother. Or as I like to call him, por favor. What up, por favor? They used to confuse please and Reese. Brother Reese, I remember. I'm like, no, I'm not please. I remember <laughs> this. I'm driving home from the club one night, and I, I got, you know, I got the big show going. Yep. And I'm driving, and I hear this song come in. And I'm like, okay, and I'm listening. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, this is a good song. Right. Not like, oh shit, what's that? I'm just like, this is a good song. And as I as I'm listening to it, I'm like, this is a really good song. This is really okay. And I'm waiting to hear who's in the mix. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And I finally hear the sweet bird in the mix with DJ, please. please. I'm like, oh, please. You know. You gotta call the hotline? I, <laughs> no, I don't to call. I'm calling him. I'm calling him like, doo -doo, you know, because like I get put on my cell, you know, it's like, hey, at this time, he's like, every DJ is awake at 3 a.m. Yeah. You know, coming out of the club, and I'm like, and he picks up, yo, please, what's up, what's up, yo, what's that song, what's that song you just played before, and I, and remember, right, be, right before you played this, in that, between this song and that song, he's like, he is like, why, who wants to know, I'm like, <laughs> me, Pendejo, I want to know, and he's like, Dude, that record, he, and he's man. like, you'll hear about it at the mix show meeting, I'm like, oh, fuck that, you telling me right now, right, and he, so he's laughed, and he's like, ah, oh, selfish, the other two, was that an import? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I it couldn't find it. Yeah. So of course, the next morning, I I go and I picked it up. I don't know where I bought it. I picked it up. I came home like okay. So come Monday morning, I get to the radio station. I go, Michael, Michael, I got this record. <laughs> Not even giving any credit to please. I because I wasn't thinking give him credit. I was like, hey, Michael, I got this record. I got this. Record. Can I play this? And he's like, is it good? I'm like. It's not too bad. It's pretty good. He's it, like, it really defines that 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 generation. And he's like, that, yeah, he's like, era, and, and Michael was like, and my the, the one thing I loved about Michael Martin is that he trusted us. Right. Out of the majority of the time, yeah, it's like if you if we brought him ten records, maybe two records were like that sucked, but the majority of the records were like you know we were like I said our batting average we had a high batting average, right. so I came in I got the record I threw it into the mix Renee sold it. Lines blew up like our phone lines blew up. What was that song? What was that what's that song? I remember playing it the first time and we got such a big reaction because I played it Kind of like in the beginning of my mix and I had Renee's back sold it that we were played it again at the end of the mix I remember that and then uh, you know and of course we bought a bunch of records we finally were able to get the domestic because it picked got picked up by a record it got picked up by warner brothers i think oh, and it wow. became I didn't know that. and it came, became domestic and then everybody had it right right and it just become it became one of those it just became one of those songs now, every a, time i play i always like now here's a little me. funny story about the other two so my boy marcus lee uh-huh my boy marcus lee he uh a few years uh I would say about a year, year and a half ago, he calls Jay Espinoza. And he starts to sing, hey, Jay, what's this song? And he starts singing it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jay's like, oh, that's the other two selfish. All right. So what Jay did is he took the recording, he put it into his Ableton, <laughs> and he basically made a remix with Marcus singing it. You made an edit? Okay, <laughs> now, if you follow me on Twitch, at DJ Jose Melendez, if you follow me on Twitch, Jay sent me a copy of this that of Marcus dope. singing <laughs> "Selfish" the other two, and it goes into the original. That's dope. Hey, the, the people in the chat are saying that's their favorite 
That's their favorite Ryan Tunnel. That's the favorite that's how, we've been, I got to get that. Because we've been playing it for over a year now. Really? Yes. In our and he was just singing it on the, on the well, voicemail? Well, he was singing it on the voicemail because he was trying to figure out, okay. hey, Jay, uh, it goes, no sensory. Yeah. And, and Jay's like, <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have done that. They basically took it, loaded it up. Made the remix. I will send That's it to dope. you. I, I need and that, dude. Marcus, to this day, to this day, he's like, I hate that version. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, you should have sang on Jay Espinosa's voicemail. Man. So, yeah. So, but the other two, selfish. That's yeah, the there, there's, there's certain records when I hear that, uh, you know, that remind me, like, for instance, I, when I hear Two Blind Minds, it reminds me of Jazzy Jim, because that was our Jazzy Hot 97. Jim remix. The they, Jazzy yeah, Jim remix. He, he remixed that record. So, yeah, so it's crazy. I always think about a lot of DJs now, they don't have, a, like, identity. Like, uh, there's certain records that, you know, that we would play that, like, you know, we made it our own. Because it's a different time. Right, man. It's, I miss those look, days. Look, 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 look. I, I, I get where a lot of old school DJs are coming from, okay? Now, I'm hoping you are not one of these kind of D old school DJs who are just mad at the world. No, 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 no. Okay, no. because there are a lot there are some old school DJs. I can give you a list of old school DJs who live in San Jose and San Francisco who all they do is complain about today's DJs, today's music, today's format, today's clubs, today's this, today's that. It wasn't like back in the day. It wasn't like back in the day. It wasn't and and I'm like Okay, but you're. I, I get it. I, I get that whole mentality. I do get it. However, stop being so mad at the world. The world changes. Things change. And, and well, you I, have to make your own lane, too. Yeah, like, if yeah, you don't you like can, it, you don't you, have to go exactly. do that. You can create a whole different There's a lot a of, party. And I get it. And, 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 but I, and I get it. I get it. And I, trust me. I Trust me. I'm an old school dude. <laughs> I, I, right. I, you know, and... I learned a long time ago to let it go, let it go. And I learned also. So you uh, say just let it go, kind of like, did you let go of the fact that they said that you used to hate Stevie B? I don't hate Stevie B. That's what old school Vato said. Well, no, no, because <laughs> old school Vato doesn't, no. You, no, because old, old, old school Vato is just saying this so he can basically get mentions. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get into the Stevie B story in a bit. But he just, he, you know, he just wants attention. No, I don't hate Stevie B. <laughs> oh, gracias. No, it's, not, it's nothing like that. Um, I, I love where I came from. And, and I actually use where I came from for today. Because today, if you thought back then was a cutthroat business... It's even more so now. So I, I, I take what I learned from back in the day and I use it today. Right. And like I said, I mean, believe it or not, with all these DJs hating all, like, I, I hate this sound. I'm like, you know what? I embrace it. I love it. Right. I totally love it. The, the poppier and the cheesier, the more I love it. Who doesn't love cheese? I love cheese. <laughs> you know, I love cheese. I, I love everything because it makes me and continues to make me the DJ I am today. Um, yeah, maybe. It's like, because even if you go back in the day, it's like nobody was into the pop music. Nobody was into Britney, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, and that. And today, every DJ is playing it because, like, oh, that's the greatest sound ever. Yeah, but you weren't playing it back in the day. You know, yeah, that's you it. weren't playing it back in the day. You weren't playing none of this music back in the day because you thought, oh, that's just sellout music. That's just sellout music. You know, I'm going to keep it real. Keep it real don't get you paid. Keep it real doesn't keep a roof over your head. Keeping it real is a stupid, is one of the, for me, keeping it real is one of the dumbest, dumbest mentalities ever. Because what is keeping it real? You know, to who? Who is it keeping it real to? To your personal standards? Well, I can give a fuck about your personal standards. Right. What, what's keeping it real? I remember when I was working on Wild, and uh, my friends, they were like, oh, you sold out. I'm like, yeah, I fucking play for a half a million people in the morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, lime? Lime, like, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I get it, man. I, You know what's cool? Like, I... I with talking with the younger generation, because they, they, they ask, too, because sometimes, you know, because today's clubs, before the pandemic, there'll be, like, five DJs in, you know, let's say, you know... A really small amount of time, so you really can't explore your sound or build. Or they're maybe by used to just doing one hour sets or two hour sets, but they don't really know how to program for four hour nights. Yeah, and like I said, and that's so they would ask for advice. So I think like us as the older you know statesmen, we should share this knowledge 
But also, too, like for me, man, I know I, I started clubbing at 13, 14, going to studio. But, uh, but, so I knew the etiquette of going I, I, I get it. And, and, people, it. But here's the thing. It's different it all now. depends on if they want to listen. Right. Who's open-minded? Right. And I keep saying this all the time. You can lead them to water, but you right. can't make them drink. You know, it's it, 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 that applies for everything in life. You know, it applies that you can lead them, but you can't make them, you know. So if a DJ just basically wants to just, you know, buy his controller, you know, download Serato Tractor, download all the music and sync everything to each his own. Huh. More power to you. And I know a lot of DJs like, ah, oh, he's lazy, he's cheating, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, man. I don't got time to worry about that. I don't got. To, I don't care if this DJ is mixing on an iPad. I could care. He could be mixing on his off his iPhone. I don't care. I have to care about what I can do. Right. What right. I do. I got to care about me. I got to care about taking care of me first. You know. So if you want to sit there and complain about the business, you want to complain complain about DJs, format, music, blah blah. Go right ahead. I ain't got time to listen to it. I ain't got time. But apparently you do, so knock yourself out. What, what does Jose Melendez look for inspiration? What 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 inspires well, you when like when you're looking for music or a new sound? No, I, I mean I don't know if there's if if inspiration is something the word I want to use because I love music. Right. I love music in general, you know. I mean, I love listening to the DJs. I love listening to creative DJs. I mean, I, I do. I love listening to how they get on the turntables and do their thing right. or control or whatever. I, I love listening, you know, because there are going to be times I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Right. You know, what was that record? Shazam. <laughs> well, that record, I like that record, you know? Right. Um, so when I'm looking for music, of course, I'm looking for what fo what fits me, what fits the, f the venues I'm going to be playing at, what, right. what can I introduce, you know? So necessarily, music has always been an inspiration, right. you know, but the mentality is just a little different. It's kind of funny, too, because as DJs, we listen to music in a totally different way than most. Right. I get the one... Pop, the one question I get asked all the time, all the time, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite format? What's your favorite this? I can't listen to me. I don't listen to music like that. I don't like I love music. I love certain artists. I love certain songs, but I don't have a favorite. And most DJs will tell you they don't have a favorite. We love music as a whole. Like, you know, somebody will say, oh, listening to Drake. It just puts me in my, you know, puts me here. I'm like, yeah, Drake puts out some great music, you know. Oh, I love, you know, I love, um, you know, they'll, they'll mention alternative music. Ah, uh, just, you know, they, they, they sing from their heart. They sing from their pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm right. like, yeah, I get that. Right. I'm not emotionally invested like you are. Like, I love music, but I'm not emotionally invested. I'm not emotionally invested in this artist, the way they come up with music, the way they sing, the way they rap. You know, I'm not emotionally invested like that. Okay. It's like, that's a good song. Could I, will it fit? Right. <laughs> you know, can you incorporate will, it? Well, can I incorporate it? Right. And, you know, and when I'm in my car or in my by myself, believe it or not, I'm hardly listening to any music because you like talk radio or like podcasts, talk or, radio, yeah. sports radio, whatnot. But I'm not like you know, if I am listening to music, you know, maybe I'll check out some mix shows, I'll check out some DJs. Maybe I just want to listen to some house music. Maybe right. I want to listen to some salsa. Maybe I want to listen right. to you know some old school hip hop. Maybe I want to listen to some new hip hop. Right. You know, maybe I you know what I'm looking for music. But I mean, enjoying it in a different way. I'm not emotionally invested in the artist, the lyrics, or anything like that. I'm invested in like, wow, right. that sounds good. I like that. I could use that. Right. Or hey, I'll just keep that over here because maybe one day I want to listen to it just because I like the song, not because it's speaking to me. <laughs> okay, know? gotcha. You know, man, V, I, I, I see some dessert over there, and I'm eyeing it. It's like, Wait, you're about, yeah. <laughs> oh, the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got for us? Oh, oh, we got to show that to the crowd. Look at it. Come on. Woo! Show them. What is that? Show them, Jose. What is that? And I'm going to tell you right now, I love me some sweets. Oh, man, desserts. I love me some desserts. If you know me, I love me some desserts. Look at that. That's amazing. Oh. I can't, go, I can't talk. Oh. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. See, they want to know what it is. Give her a mic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Okay. I'm going to eat some of this. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Or you can well, hold on. They out. can't see you because Jose's on the camera. Go ahead. We got to look slow, right? You gotta go around by yo. Alright. Oh, that's so good. Tonight, I oh. So I had to ask Jose. Yes. What? Well, you reached, you said I oh, that's I right. That's right. You did. Yeah, she I did. Messaged him because she, she messaged. I did. She, she slid in my DM. <laughs> <laughs> she slid in the DM. Because I'm such a huge mm. fan, and I had to make something that he enjoyed. That's right? what we call it these days, because I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> So I went ahead and asked. He said he loves blueberry muffins. I love so me some blueberry muffins. Oh, I, love I blueberry. went with a blueberry lemon Woo. cupcake with cream cheese frosting oh. and blueberry compote. Then I went ahead because he also said he liked chocolate and vanilla. I love me some chocolate. So I always throw a cheesecake <laughs> and I did a s'mores cheesecake. So it's chocolate with a marshmallow swirl <laughs> topped with whipped cream and shaved chocolate. We have a we have a studio audience over there and they're hella jealous right now. <laughs> they're, they're hella jelly right now. <laughs> you, did you make this for me? Really? I did. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm, I'm hold on, hold on. I'm gonna do the blueberry right now. I'm gonna do the blueberry. Can I? Can I do the chocolate? The chocolate was amazing. The chocolate. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here, this is the blueberry. Oh my god! <laughs> they are amazing. No, I love the, your OMG! Oh, OMG! Oh my goodness, thank you! Me and I, oh! <laughs> I can eat this the rest of the night. I really can. Thank you! Good You're said, thank very you. welcome. So what, 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 what is, do you have any favorite memories of time of hearing Jose on the radio? You know, just like I said, my what youth. Right my, oh, my yeah, youth, yeah. right? So I remember the wild workout at noons. I remember listening with my friends and, you know, dancing around the house Aww. or, you know, I'm, like I said, huge fan. Absolutely love it. And Not gonna cry. Not gonna cry. I never no. did. No, no, never got to. So that's why I'm like, even just his presence right now, I was like, oh, Jose. <laughs> okay, relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> All right, that's no, but yeah, I'm like, definitely my youth, you know, that's so. Cool. It's Thank you. I appreciate that. Memorable, I mean, sure. What about you? Do you have any memories oh. of this, Mr. Jose? Well, I used to ditch school. Oh, oh you got, you got I used to ditch school all the time. We would put on 107.7 every time, and just like Dude, that was just so powerful. You man. were like definitely like, and I was like, "Shit, Jose Malin, really? You know him?" He's like, Dude, <laughs> come on, bro. I know him. I'm like, "Shh." Thank you. I, I, look, this guy's really humble, man. Look, really, look, look, he don't, look, look, he don't look, look, like look. it. He, he gets the look, weird, look, gets look. weird you, ass. You, you get as old as me in this business because this business is definitely directed to the young. Okay. And, um, you know, I, and I have to stay in that kind of mentality because I, I still got to work, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I could do, you know, old school parties all the time, I would. But that just isn't the direction of the club business because that crowd is not going to come out on a week to week basis. Because mm -hmm. you got to like, all right, three months from now. I'm gonna do an old school party because I got time to find some babysitters and I, yeah. you know I, I'll be able to I'm gonna need to rest <laughs> and then we gotta plan on our night you know but um, I, I, I get it and thank you so much it, it really means a lot to me um, I'm still I'm very blessed and I yes I like to consider myself a humble guy because I'm still able to do this as far as a career and whatnot you know how many DJs you inspired bro I mean do you ever think about that um it, I, I, do you ever get that? Does I anybody get, come no, up I to you and tell you? I, I do get I that imagine. a lot. I do get that a lot. I, I get DJs hitting me up all the time, you know, be, you know, young and old. My dad, you know, my dad, my mom and dad would always listen to you, and that made me want to become a DJ. You know, I'm, Marcus safe. Lee. Marcus Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Lee. I supposedly had an inspiration on Marcus Lee. Now, really? Here's a connection with Marcus Lee. <laughs> So seven years ago, I meet Marcus Lee at this party called Sundays in San Francisco. Ooh, I remember hip, that. Hip hop, straight hip hop ratchet party. I meet Marcus Lee through Jay Espinosa. And we start talking and whatnot. Come to find out that Marcus Lee 
is the nephew of Mark Escalante. No! Mark, fools, Mark Escalante and his dad. So Mark Escalante is Marcus's lead uncle. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. What? Full circle, dude. dude full circle. Full wow. Circle. He would listen to me on the radio. And the one record he thought was the pivot the pivotal record that made him go, I want to be a DJ. Because he heard me play it during the workout at noon. Selfish. <laughs> All right? <laughs> System F, out of the blue. Really? Now, not just the original, because uh, because Street Hits put out a different version. Right, right. Now, you hear the intro, and then it goes into this sample that goes, pump it up, pump it up, right. pump it up, right? So... He hears this version, not knowing that it's not the original version, right? So he starts going to the record stores, and he's like, hey, I want to hear a System F. Well, you got System F out of the blue. And then the guy's like, yeah, it's over there. So he goes, and they had a little listening station. He puts it on, and he starts listening to it. And we're like, where's the pump it up version? Where's the pump? This is not, this is not the, hey, pump it up, pump, right? And he's like, this is not the version. And he's like, well, that's the song. Right. He bought it anyway. Right. And, of course... Down the road, he finds the compilation the on straight hits, and he's like, "That's the version! That's the version!" And from then on, supposedly he says, because of me and a few other people, that he became a DJ. That's sick. Years down the road, I meet him at Sundays, and like, my uncle is Mark Escalante, and I'm like, "Get the fuck!" That's out of crazy. And, boom. and from that point on, we were we were cool. We were cool, you know. We didn't become the best friends at that point. Yeah, yeah. But during this pandemic, during this pandemic, you know, which nobody saw coming, which basically devastated our industry. For sure. Completely devastated. I mean, I basically within within a within a within a one week period, I lost six months of gigs right off the bat. Yeah. Man. You know, the pandemic basically showed everybody's true colors yeah it really did and it affected me like it affected everybody else um i didn't want to i don't want to say i went into a depression because i didn't i didn't mm -hmm. go into pr depression but i i did start to get worried i was i was starting to get like oh shit how am i gonna pay my rent yeah right. i'm gonna pay my bills I'm gonna, you know how 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 all right and, of, and now I'm no longer going into the station to do my mix. Right. I'm recording everything from home and, and sending a lot it. of a lot of adjustments, a lot of adjustments. And I don't know how it started. I can't say exactly when it started, but all of a sudden a group chat happened between Jay Espinoza, Marcus Lee, and myself. And this, and it just it just kind of started. And we're talking. And we're talking, and we're just bullshitting. Half the time, we're just bullshitting, you know, making fun of each other, <laughs> you know, and all that as friends would do. And I can honestly say that during this pandemic, Marcus and Jay played a... They are one of the very few people who played a pivotal role in saving me through this pandemic, and I became closer to them than I have ever become, you know, with them in over the years that I've, you know, that I, I've known them. I mean, not. I don't consider them my my best friends anymore. Sure, I consider right. them my brothers. Right. And they helped me, and they helped me through so much. They helped me, you know, build my Twitch stream. They helped me, not not just help it give me the idea for the Twitch stream, but they actually like your Twitch stream kind of sucks. You need a better microphone. You need. <laughs> Yeah, okay, what's well, the only microphone I got? And I can't afford a microphone. I gotta pay my rent, and I'm behind on that. So one day we're all hanging out. We go to Guitar Center. They buy me a microphone. That's dope. I'm like, you know, they buy me. He's like, yeah, you needed this. And I'm like, you, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't need to get me this. And they're right. like, no, you need this. And they, were, they started helping me. They bought me my microphone. They bought me, you know, Marcus got me my camera. Nice. He got me connections. He got me... You know, here are these guys who are probably dealing with their own issues. Right. Helping me. That's dope. You know, and I never asked for it. I never asked for any of it. You know, I was just happy that they were helping me. They were helping me emotionally at times. Right. You know, and and they're like, no, we got you. 
to them, it was like kind of, you know, ah, we got you. We boys, we got you. And to me, well, I'm that, like, well, that's what real true friends do yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, that's you know? crazy, man, because I, 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 I had the same feeling because I even though um, I have my regular nine to five, but a lot of my money that I make is from DJing. I do a lot of corporate weddings and, mm-hmm. you know, all these big events. I was like, man, well, how am I going to support my family? Right, but, exactly. And that was my main concern. Like, th- there was times I was like, "Yo, I'm not, I'm not being a man enough for like taking care of my home because I'm so used to, you know, everything is 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 on the up and up." Uh, so if, if it wasn't for hanging out with Dante and doing our our neo social, Dante, <laughs> Dante! <laughs> we, you know, he helped me. I understand that you sometimes need a group of fella, uh, yeah, folks yeah. that that to, to surround yeah. yourself, even just to talk. Yeah, and here's and that's the, so and, important. And, and me being me, and I know me, I'm not. I I'm I'm not the one to ask. I'm never one to ask or whatnot. I'm not, you know. I, I'll be more the hey, what you need? Right. You need help? I, I you know I'll help you with what I can, right. but I I don't ask for it, and that's just a stubbornness in me. I I get that. But they saw something. Right. They saw a need. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of it. We got you. We got you. And you know, I'm not trying to cry. I, you know what, man? I, I've seen some shows that were so dope, bro. Like to see the the human side of you. Like uh, one of them, we lost a dear friend, uh, Jay Reese. Oh, tw- uh, yeah. yeah he, and that was uh, that was hard for me as well because, you know, um, I remember him when he was coming to Agenda, and I would coach him. You know, like, hey, this is how you open up, and and it's funny because I one of the last times that we all hung out, we were. I was DJing at SP2, and he goes, Reese, you know this mix? And he was explaining the mix. And I go, yeah. yeah. He goes, I fucking do that mix all the time. <laughs> I go, really? And I go, no yeah. shit. And then so, you know, it was just, he was like my little brother because we shared the same name. And he's from South San Jose yeah. like I. Jay, Jay Reese was also one of my best friends, you know. A monster, I mean, yeah, dude. You know, and he was an incredible DJ, you know. And, um, you know, if you look at my Twitch stream, the days I'm not doing my green screen and right. whatnot, I, I have two uh, two paintings uh, made by DJ Too Tall. DJ Too Tall, Too Tall, our he little made, brother, he made our these, little tall brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> same feet, same, same foot, Mexican. Try finding that somewhere else, right? <laughs> A seven foot Mexican, and he don't play basketball. No. Anyways. At all, right? His dad, so, I know his dad. His dad's yeah. a cop. So he's real nice people. He's an incredible artist. In- talent. In- incredible. So I asked him, "Hey, can you make a portrait of my mom?" You know. All right. And he's like, "Yeah." And he made that. He made it on a vinyl. I asked him for Sick. it. He made it on a vinyl. And then when Jay Reese did pass, um, you know, he made these little placards. You know, right. and uh, I was able to get one. Did you get the sticker too? I didn't get the sticker, the, I, but I did get the little little five by whatever yeah. it was and. And I got some frames for it. Uh-huh. So when you don't see me with my green screen, and I have just a plain background, I have this uh, this cassette deck, this cassette on my left, and I have the portraits that Tutal made of my mom and Jay Reese. That's dope. You know, because you, you guys get, spent a lot of time together for dude, uh, for a long time. I dude, remember seeing you. I mean, your name yeah. On I mean, you know, we we yeah. When we you know, met, taste ultra lounge for sure. Yeah, I mean, no. Jay Reese and I, we just for whatever reason, we just connected, you know. He was and a cool we and dude, we were man. and you know he would he would call me up. Hey, you know, when he was having issues, right. you know, especially when it came down to the politics of the business. Right. How do I deal with this? Right. How do I do it? Right. All right. This is what you you know you gotta pick your battles. Right. You gotta pick your battles. Right. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't call him out because every time he on, he go on, you know, social media and start calling fools out. I'm like, stop that! <laughs> don't call fools out because you don't know how that relationship is going to be down the road. And one Amen. day, that person you were talking shit about is a person that's going to be hiring you. Is going to give the hand. Right. Stop it. But I go. I know. But are you going to fight every battle? Right. You know. So I always felt that I had to mentor him. Like. Right. Calm at the man. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be yeah, all good, yeah. you know. And 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 vice versa. I'd be able to go to him and complain about shit, right. you know. And he would tell me the same thing. Jose, didn't you tell right. me to calm down? Didn't you tell me to pick your battles? I'm like, fuck you. But you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're, right. you're absolutely. Right. There was another show that I seen that I think you took over and. Uh, um, Jay had a little too much to drink, or uh, he had an edible, and he was kind of like, oh, <laughs> and you took over the show. But I, I just, I, I love the camaraderie between you guys and seeing the chemistry. Oh, man. Because you don't get to see that, you know what I mean? 
And it I, was cool. And then, the, and then when, you know, I could imagine for his audience, they got a chance to see, you know, do you know, your thing I, and yeah, work I mean, and, and open up another. Jay, Marcus, uh, and I, we've all, you know. It's, it's, so, it's we, cool, we, Yeah, man. we've definitely been I, on I like all that. of each other's streams and whatnot and definitely been, uh, you know, we were shown to each other's audience and everything. And, you know, and then, of course, we would all get together and we would do one big stream and, you know, it was it wasn't anything you know planned as far as like what are we gonna play? So, so, so this was just like you guys all, vibing out. We're just vibing out because That's it's during the awesome. pandemic and we're like, all right, let's just stream. Let's take take our mind off things. Right. Let's have some shots. Let's just play some music. You know, won't take anything serious. And I'm like, yeah, and it just it it grew organically. It was real. I mean. You could tell. I mean, most people could tell when you're bullshitting and faking right. and all that. But you know, and it came to a point where, you know, it's like, hey, when are you guys? When are you three guys streaming again? When are you guys streaming again? When you, it came, it got to that point where right. people were like, when are you three streaming again? Because they love our. Yeah, the times that I caught you guys because I was finishing doing my shit, and I just wanted to wind down and I just watch you guys and just crack up and like, fuck, I want to be at that party right now. With that. <laughs> I, I would just love to be there just, just to be. Yeah, because we're just DJing and talking shit. Exactly, and I love it. the nothing camaraderie, more, man. Nothing less, nothing more, nothing less. And you know, for just... a long time, man, I, I would always say, I go, fucking Jose, man. He's from San Jose because you were out here for a long time. That's funny. And every, you, yeah, you every, would every, share every, the story with me. Like, every, you're like, San Jose? What is San Jose? I, uh, <laughs> So, okay, so here, so San Jose. To me, growing up, San Jose was like Alaska. I was like, San, what the <laughs> fuck is San Jose? <laughs> San Jose? So when I got to Wild, when I finally got to Wild, um, and, and I started doing the workout and everything, uh, I start, the sales department would call, hey, Jose, are you, you know, we got this club in San Jose that wants to hire you. I'm like, San Jose? That's f that's 45 minutes away. Why am I going to drive? Can't you get me anything hey, in the hey, city? Hey, you hear what he said? Take 45 minutes away. Yeah. Now what it is, an hour and a half. <laughs> you know, I live in yeah. no, San Jose. Oh, yeah, yeah, in traffic. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, why San Jose? Don't you, can't you get me anything in the city? He's like, they're willing to pay your rate. And in fact, I can get you more. I'm like, where's this club? All right. Okay. All right. All right. And first club in San Jose. First club that I ever DJed in San Jose was oh my goodness i can't even remember because it was even before i started doing the regular clubs out here so it had to be paradise no Beach, no, no, no? no 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 first major club i did in san jose was yeah it was paradise beach that was my first i remember major club. but i did i did come out here a few times to do like with local promoters right you know little bars and here and that but my right. first major club yeah was paradise beach so it so now I'm starting to come out to San Jose. My CDs drop. Now I'm coming out to San Jose literally three, four times a week. Literally, it just got to a point where I was just now coming out here all the time. And here's where the confusion began because one, people thought <laughs> me personally yeah, I know lived where, out I know here where you're going. I know where in you're going. San Jose. However, they were also confusing me with another Jose Melendez. There was two. There was two of us. So, back in the day, there was a radio station out here called Hot 97.7. Hot. Okay, and there was a there was a DJ by the name of Jose Melendez who worked at Hot 97.7. Hot 97.7 basically got sold. It broke. It broke out. Half the people went to Wild. Half the people, people went, went to, to KML, KML. And other people just went did their own thing. Right. Okay, I'm at Wild now. And I'm starting to DJ in San Jose, right? And you hear the commercial, catch Jose Melendez at Paradise Beach Thursday nights. Nice. Catch Jose Melendez. So now I'm DJing. I'm I'm showing up and I'm DJing. And all of a sudden people are coming up to me and they're like, hey, hey, where's Jose Melendez? And I'm like, I'm Jose Melendez. <laughs> like, no, no, you're no, not, no, Holmes. They're like, no, no, where's Jose Melendez? I'm like, hey, but no, I'm Jose Melendez. No, you're not, Carlos. No, you're not. And you're like, <laughs> so. For 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 a while, I'm like, who the fuck is this other Jose Melendez? I'm I'm like, I need to get to the bottom of this. So one day we have a music meeting at the radio station. Guy shows up, <laughs> and I'm sitting in the meeting. And he's like, and then I, you know, and Michael Martin is like, hey Jose, you're gonna, you're gonna guess what? Jose Melendez. Ah! <laughs> What and record like, label? What record label? Upstairs Records. Yes. Saddle like, Day, dude. And I'm like. You're Jose Melendez? 
He goes, he's yeah. Like, he's cool, and dude. And he goes, do you know how many people confuse me with you? I'm like, fuck you. You know how many people confuse me with you? <laughs> <laughs> and we start cracking. I'm like, and I start telling him about all this. He's like, yeah, I used to work at Hot 97.7. I was part of the street team. I DJ, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, now I'm working for Upstairs Records. I'm like, screw your records. I ain't playing them. Screw them. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> what you got? And, dude, uh, and, and that oh, was a running man. joke. Now I'm like, okay, look. There can only be one. And I'm sorry. I have to be the one right. because you're no longer DJing. I'm in the streets now. Right. You're behind the scenes. So you're just going to have to yeah, give that up. You're so, pushing records. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the DJ. I'm the face now, okay? And he's like, and he's kind of looking at me. He's like, no, you got to tell your people it's not you anymore. Right. There can only be one. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm being serious, dog. Cause this is serious, you know, because people can be getting mad when they come up and they're like, you're not Jose Melendez. Sick, cabrón. Here's my fucking ID. I am Jose Melendez. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. But big shout out to Jose Melendez. He's now one of the owners of La of Luna Luna, Luna Restaurant. Luna restaurants, yeah. Luna they restaurant. have two locations. Yes, yes. So big shout out to the other Jose Melendez in San Jose with Luna Restaurant. All right. Okay, that, that, that's all family. Of, uh, all of, all of, all family. Jose, uh, you got some questions? A, you have a fix the mic story? <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> what is this about? Oh, yeah, I love that your community is coming here telling your secrets, bro. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Fix is, the mic. I, 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 okay, so this is the infamous Stevie B story. Oh! How much time uh, we got? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. 806. Hey, give him a, make him a shot, bro. He, he, yeah, 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 give him a shot, right, bro. Right, gonna, I need a stretch for this one. <laughs> this is the infamous Stevie B story. Hold on. All right. Uh, all, right, all, right, all, right all right. All right. All right. Jose, fix my mic. Yeah, it's this. coming. Don't worry, people. <laughs> they, they, they about, y'all about to know, y'all about to hear the, the Stevie B story. Because I know, I knew eventually I was going to have to tell it, so. This is going. This is the infamous Stevie. Speak research. on it. Let speak me know on when it. you're ready. Let me know when you're ready. Put some respect on it. Put yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know Stevie B used to live out here. Yes, the other Jose Melendez is the owner of Joe Lopez and I. Yeah, and Isaac B. Yeah. Upstairs Records. Yes. Yes. Upstairs Records. Yep. Yep. Uh, I remember. They are flooding the chat with. with um, Fix my mic. Icons of Stevie B. I got, <laughs> yes. Dude, hey, his are, fans those, are those crazy. Are, those are my emotes. Those are my Twitch emotes. You, you, you chose Stevie B, huh? Yeah. So like I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna explain it all. I'm going to explain it all. I want to tell so, you, girl. Oh, 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 yeah. my eyes. I remember back in the day. Searching the fire. Uh, days, dude. I cut your mic, Reese. Oh, why? I just, I, I got that one. <laughs> all right, we're going to take the, let me take the shot, and then I will tell the story. See, all uh -oh. y'all know the story, but y'all don't know the story. No, so we don't know the story. Let's uh, hear the story. Let me take Searching my shot first. Let me take my shot first. <laughs> all right, we don't need no, we don't need no, we don't need no lime. We don't need no lime. We don't need no lime. All right, who can I toast? Hold Girl, on, I got to toast with somebody. Give me a second, we toast with somebody. I got to toast with somebody. All right, you're going to toast with somebody right now. Cheers, all right. All right, here we go. All right, hey, everybody. So, shot time. Put shot, shot time. Shot time. Let's shot, go. Shot time emotes in the chat. Shot time emotes in the chat. Shot time emotes in the chat. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Gracias. 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 All right. All right. Salud. All right. Shot time emotes and Stevie B emotes in the chat. And Stevie Z emotes in the chat. Stevie Z. Why is it Stevie Z? See, man, he got his whole world, bro, over uh, there. All right. Oy. Puta madre. Okay. okay, let's hear it. Okay, okay. You I'm have ready. To, you cannot interrupt. I'm not. I'm staying right here. <laughs> All right. You cannot interrupt. Can All I right. go? T -t 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 -t. All right. No matter how good it gets, okay. you cannot interrupt. All right. So, first, first, the first thing people think is that I hate Stevie B. I don't hate Stevie B. In fact, I love Stevie B. Okay? I love him. I love the guy. Okay. All right? Now, for as long as I've been mixing, and of course, I, play, I used to play a lot of freestyle back in the day. I would always play Stevie B. So for whatever reason, that has stuck with me over the years. So Jose Melendez, Stevie B, Jose Melendez, Stevie B, blah, blah, blah. It's almost kind of a running joke. Now, <laughs> here's, the here's the infamous story that I have told many times. All right, so 
Remember the body shop in San Jose? Yes. The body shop? Studio all right. 47. All right. Okay. So it wasn't an 18 and over club. It was a 16 and over club. Yeah. All right. And it was, it was a big ass club. One side for the 16 and over, one side for the 21 and over. All right. Okay. Mauricio Mejia, you know, he yes. was, he was the guy behind the body shop. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so he basically gets Stevie B. He gets Stevie B to come out and perform at the body shop. I'm like, okay, cool. And I was a DJ that night. I was nice. a DJ that night. So I'm like, okay, cool. So Stevie came to the radio station to promote. He was on air, came out, promote. I'm like, cool. So I knew he was going to be there. So I showed up. Yo, Stevie. Hi, Jose Melendez. Nice to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. How you doing? Now, just so you know, moving forward, me and Stevie B were cool. Mm-hmm. We weren't cool that night. Here we go. So. <laughs> Hi, Stevie. How are you doing? I'm Jose Melendez. I'm going to be the DJ for tonight at the body shop. Oh, cool, cool. Nice to meet you. Can't wait to see you tonight. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, by the way, I got an after party at my hotel. You're more than welcome to come. I'm like, oh, fuck shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck In my yeah. Eyes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. After party at Stevie B's house? Hells yeah. Dude. Hell, yeah. hella girls there, yeah. right? All right. So, so then I get to the club early because. Uh, they wanted me to be there for sound check. So I get there early. We do the sound check and Stevie comes off stage. He's like, Hey, this is my sound guy. Oh, Hey, nice to meet you. How you doing? All right, cool. Jump on at midnight. Boom, boom, boom. We're all good. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm DJing the whole night. So I start DJing and about 1130, the sound guy comes in and he goes over to the soundboard and he's doing all the checks and everything. And Stevie B, he has kind of like, he has... Uh, the sound guy's running half his music, and then he's got a little band, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I have seen Stevie B perform many a times. To a, it got to a point during those times that I knew his whole set. Damn. His whole set. He would come out, and his dancers would come out, and they would come, and basically the first song was "Part of Your Body," right? And they would come out. Popping and locking and everything, right? right? right. And here they and, and it's packed. Right. It's sold out, right? Both both and it's yeah, packed, yeah, yeah. sold out. So Stevie comes out and they're popping and locking and the crowd is going crazy. And at this point, I'm just sending off to the side because like, okay, sound guy, sound guy is in control of everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, okay, watching the show. That's it. Woo, Stevie, woo. <laughs> So he does a couple of songs, <coughs> and all of a sudden, after one of his songs, he's like, hey, hey. He's talking, and all of a sudden, he's like, hey, 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 hey. Uh, hey, my mic. Some, my mic. I, I Raise my mic. <laughs> Fix my mic. Fix my mic. I naturally look at the sound guy, yeah. right? And the sound guy is kind of like, What's he talking? What's Stevie talking about? He's like, so he kind of adjusts a couple things, and I'm like, and then so Stevie goes into his next song, right? And I'm like, and it's sounding good, clean. It's clean, like everything's clean. No hum, no feedback. No. Stevie sounds crystal clear. Song ends, and he's talking to the crowd. He's like, Yo, what's wrong with my microphone? I can't hear anything. And I'm like, What's he talking about? All of a sudden, he goes. Hey, DJ, DJ, fix my mic, DJ, yo, Jose, fix my mic. Oh, and I'm hell saying, no. And I'm like, did he, did he, just called did he say Jose? And I'm looking at the sound guy. I look at the sound guy, and the sound guy's like, I don't know. And I'm like, no, he didn't say my name. He didn't say my name. <laughs> Goes into his next song. Comes out, same shit. I can't hear anything. And all of a sudden he goes, Jose Melendez, I told you to fix my mic. And I'm like, did he just say my name? No. And I look at the sound guy. And I'm like, and the sound guy's like, I don't know what he's talking about. And I'm like, and then all of a sudden he gets the crowd's like, hey, fix my mic. Fix my oh, mic. Hell and no. I'm sitting there going, and I'm like, I'm like Oh hell no! He is not talking he to me. You he out. is he is straight called me out. Fix my mic. The whole crowd. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this. I get up. I walk out of the booth. And the sound guy, I don't even know what and I walk straight to the bar. I still hear the crowd. Fix my mic. And I walk <laughs> up to the bar tender. And the bartender is like, 
Jose, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. Give me a double. I don't know. Fuck him. Fuck CVB. Fuck that guy. Fuck him. Fuck him and his mic. Fuck him. He's like, you need a shot? Yes, a double. And he just kind of pours, and I grab the shot, and I take it. I am so livid. I am so livid at this point. He goes on with the rest of the show, goes on with the rest of the show, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this boy is. Drunk, high, all of the above. Right. I walk back up into the, into the booth. The show is over. Sound guy comes up, and he's like, yo, man, I, I'm sorry. It's like, not your fault. Uh, see so you at the after party? Fuck Stevie B! Fuck his after party! <laughs> and fuck! I hope this after party gets called on! I hope the, I hope the cops come and close his, his after party down for loud music! Fuck that guy! I was so pissed that night. <laughs> down the road, I eventually talked to Stevie. And he talks to me like nothing has happened. Stevie! Jose! Jose! I got some new music! Yeah! Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> no, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking, fuck you. You know, I'm th- but he's like, I got some new music. You know, I want to know if you can help me out, blah, blah, blah. Because the record label was able to get him in contact with me because of the show, the right. workout. And he just acted like. So what was the issue? Was it the monitors? To this day, nobody knows. Because if they can hear it on the main no, no, system, no, 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 no. it has to be the to, monitors. To, to, I, I think he was either drunk, high, or just fucking bad the shit good crazy. Doing Yola, man. No, do it to you. Do it. And <laughs> shit. I think he was talking to the other Jose. Maybe he was talking to the other, but I'll, I'll tell you. The, the, the thing is, today, I laugh at it, and it's, it's the joke. It's the running joke. And like I said, I have nothing. In fact, I have nothing but admiration for Stevie B. In fact, I'm going to go see him at the Freestyle Explosion. I'm going to go to the show, you know. Right, Jay Espinosa right. got us some tickets, and he's like, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, let's go. It's Fuck it, you know. good times. But, I mean, I have nothing against Stevie B. I mean, if you look at my emotes, I got three emotes of Stevie B. What's I, your favorite song from Stevie B? I don't. Oh, um, uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, my favorite song from Stevie B. And I won't say my favorite. Uh, is um, I want to be the one. Yeah, that's a good jam. I like believe, uh, Spring believe Love, it or not, but the no, the no, pre- believe, the it or not, believe it or not, Spring Love, I don't think is his best song. And I know that's blasphemy for some of you. Oh my God, you're in I, San Jose. You're I know, I know. Okay, she's making really a shank, you fool. Her, her fucking, her like <laughs> the fucking vein is popping in her head. I don't think Spring Love is his best song. I think it's maybe his fourth or fifth best song. I honestly, wow. I, 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 I think it goes. I, I, no, 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 I, I know. Party Your Body, dude, that's a banger, Okay, my dude. first CVB song that I bought, the first piece was Party Your, Your Body. Body. But I Want to Be the One is the first one. Party Your Body is the second. Uh, stop and, uh, um, let's see, uh, the Postman song. Yes. The, post, the Postman song. <laughs> yeah, yes! That's the one! That's the one! You see the uh, chef, he loved yeah, that one. Yeah, yes. that, like, that, I didn't that, know Cholo was like that yeah. one, bro. Um, <laughs> let's see. What, oh, the, what was the other ballad? What was the other ballad? I, you know what I like is the funky melody when he went with funky that. Funky melody was, that was cool. A, that was a banger. Funky melody. What was the other ballad? Uh... Uh, Tate loves freestyle. Look at him. Oh, uh, yeah. Watch but I, but I, I, honestly, I think oh, Spring Love is long. like his fifth or sixth best song. Yeah? Yeah. No way. Dude. Yes. The yes, beat way. acapella on the 12-inch, bro? Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Oh. But I know it's blasphemy. And, and, and you know. And it, you know, and San Jose is like known for these mixes. You either play uh, Boogie City with Mondole, and then you got to oh, play fucking Spring hurt. Love yeah. and Into Funky Little Beat. That's just yeah, notorious. Yeah, yeah, Or First Impression for Ben Lover. Oh, you my know. God. You know that. The acapella over Planet Rock. Rock you know, I know. <laughs> I got the acapella those over are, Planet those Rock. Those are the go-to mixes in San yeah, Jose, man. So, but that's kind of like the running joke with... My streamers, <laughs> my, my channel dope. is Stevie B's. Like, How hey, many moderators do you have? I have three moderators. My my girl, call me Jan, Susie Bay, and my boy Z. And, What's but up, we moderators? Just, but Z, my boy Z, uh-huh. um, we gave him a new nickname. What's Stevie Z. Stevie Z. <laughs> You guys got to make him a emote with oh, that. No, right? I that's that's yeah. Oh, no, I do have an emote. I do have an emote. The that emote's already done. I'm just waiting on the drop. <laughs> so, what's, so what's next for, for, for uh, Mr. Jose Melendez? Uh, so you know... It, Look, just coming out of this pandemic, I'm just trying to kind of rebuild my uh, my foundation. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. Um, I'm a DJ at heart, and at the end of the day, I don't think like I'm not trying to get I'm not trying to do a nine to five or anything like that. You know, if I if I die tomorrow, if the Lord takes me tomorrow, I've lived a good life. I I want to die a DJ tomorrow. That's dope. 
I want to die. That's that's the bottom line. I want to die a DJ tomorrow, and you know, if I'm not, you know, I don't. I, I I'm when it comes to riches, I'm like, yeah, I want to take care of my 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 bills and everything, right. but. You know, my family, my son, you know, my uh, my friends, people that I care about and love and cherish deeply. That's all the riches you kind of need, you know, right, right. you know, it's, you know, so like I said, I want to honestly, I want to die a DJ tomorrow. That's dope. Uh, you know what I love about when I come and see you? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> you know what I love about going on your streams is the community that you built and, and everybody's so welcoming and like they gave they yeah. show mad love to new people that come in there. You know, and, I, I, and I, I'm really I like that, I'm man. very blessed and, and really truly humble by the people who who tune in every day, you know, and it's it crazy how off how they tune in every day it, it blows it literally blows my mind that the same group of people tune in every day to listen to me to see me and you know i feel me personally like i like i'm not speaking for any other dj or any or streamers like everybody does their streams their own right, way right but me personally i try to give love to anyone who pops up in the chat i try to say what's up to everybody you know, and and thank them. I, I continually see thank them every single day for tuning in because they can listen to any other DJ. Yeah. They can they can spend their money buying subs and bits for every other any right. other DJ. But the fact that they continue to do this for me, I mean, how humbling is that? Yeah. I love seeing old school Vato because he comes on. He supports a lot of DJs, yeah. like DJ Don Julio as well. Yeah. Uh, Purple Villain. She's, you know, yep. happy birthday. That's our yeah, yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, Purple just, Villain. J you know, Jazzy Foo. Jazzy, Jazzy Foo. Yeah, Jazzy. I love seeing all these characters. I, it's, Have it's, they ever come up to you in, oh, in no, person? Oh, no. It's like every, like, since things have opened, it's been great meeting a lot of these people in real life. Do they tell you the real name or they tell you their handle? How do you recognize who is who? So here's another running joke. Here's another running joke with my streamers and with my my chat and you know people will come up and was like hey i'm joe and i'm like hi joe <laughs> oh i'm so you know and they'll tell me their screen name i'm like well why the fuck did you tell me your screen name in the beginning you know, like, I, need I don't to know, know your, who the your, fuck your joe name. is how am i fucking am i supposed to know who joe is oh no no uh, oh i am joe oh yeah. i am joe well why did you say that right i mean it's like well, I wanted to give you my real name. I don't give a fuck about your real name. Give me your screen name, because that's how I know you. So so that's the running joke. It's like, don't come up to me and say, hi, I'm Ray. Who the fuck is Ray? I'm old school Vata. Well, why did you just say that? All right? <laughs> I'm never, ever going to call you Ray. I'm going to call you old, old school Vato. Vato. <laughs> that's it. All right? Now, if I meet you, all right. like, hi, I'm Brother Reese. Right. But, uh, but on Twitch, I'm, you know... I am the only DJ Brother Reese. You know, I'm going to call right. you as Brother Reese, not by your screen name. So right. it's not like how I introduced you in the beginning, right. right? So, like I said, I got people coming up to me. It's like, I'm so and so. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude. I just know who the fuck you are. And then they tell me their screen names. Like, well, so, and I will call you. And it's weird, too, because now it's like, yeah, we'll be in public. I will I will call you by your screen names. Yes. And people are kind of like a little weirded out. It's like, don't call me by my screen name. Well, that's how I know you. All right. So until I get to know you on a more personal level, then maybe I'll call you by your real name. Other than that, you're old school Vato. And I ah, old school Vato. <laughs> My mom's like, yo, yo, man, is this a Vato here? Show, yo, yo, cut. Oh, you're all scared out. No, shit, shit, shit. All right, shit. You see the fool with the, the socks all the way up. See the up? fool. See the fool. Yo. <laughs> What is one of your? Uh, do you have any memorable shows from the pandemic? That I mean, that you still you, you think about and like, wow. Um. Yeah. I. Uh. My very first stream uh -huh. was with Marcus and Jay. Nice. We did it at Marcus's spot, and that was a, my very first stream with Jay and Marcus. And a lot of things happened that night. One. I was done. I was drunk after my stream. <laughs> done. I passed out. They continued streaming till six in the morning. <laughs> All right. And, and, and you know, so that must be nice to be young. Huh? Right? <laughs> and you know, but so my very first stream was very memorable. So that will always stick in the back of my head. The second most memorable stream was the day after Jay Reese's uh, death. Jay Reese died on a Thursday. 
I remember getting the phone call that morning by one of his close friends, and it just it just caught me off guard. I'm like, what do you mean he passed away? What what are you saying? It just I couldn't comprehend it. I couldn't grasp it. I'm like, what do you mean he passed away? So I wasn't going to be the first one to go on social media. But once I started seeing people post it, right. then I went in and, you know, it was just a day that just completely devastated me. So, of course, I didn't stream. So I was thinking the next day, well, should I stream Friday? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So now that we've gotten, I wouldn't say we've gotten past the shock, but just okay. And one of Jay Reese's mixes that he sent me was a freestyle mix. Oh, dope. And he said, yo, it's, a, it's only like a 10-minute mix. And he's like, yo, I put this together. What do you think? You completely inspired me. And I wanted to do this. And what do you think? And, you know, and th- he sent this to me a few years ago. And I listened to him. I'm like, eh, not too shabby. Yeah. <laughs> and so the next morning, so I basically, my, my streams are kind of like, uh, they're kind of tailor-made for each day of the week. Mm-hmm. Like Mondays, it's kind of like the recap of the weekend. You know, I kind of like, what happened this weekend? What crazy right. shit happened at the club this weekend? I do my Taco Tuesdays, so I kind of do a, like a Latin house, Latin vibe feel to it. Wednesdays, now I'm going to start switching it up and doing a more open format, kind of hip-hop, R&B-ish nice. type of deal. Thursday is my throwback Thursday, right. you know. And, of course, we got Freestyle Friday. So that... So I'm starting to think that day, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that night, I'm really thinking, should I stream tomorrow? Should I not stream tomorrow? And I just like, you know what? I'm going to stream tomorrow. I'm going to dedicate the mix to Jay Reese. Right. <clears throat> so I went on social media and, you know, hey, I'm going to dedicate my stream tomorrow to Jay Reese. And in fact, I'm going to play some of his edits, right. and some of his mixes. And that Friday's Freestyle Friday stream, it just went ridiculous. It just, you know, I, it was like the second most people I've ever had in my stream, you know. And I played his edits, and I ended the stream by playing the last mix he ever sent me. So if I were to say which two streams are the most memorable, would be the first one and the J. Reese tribute. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope, man. I, I just want to thank you again for coming out here and sharing your story. I, I you're an in, an amazing individual. Bro. You got relax, great. relax. I know you like it, bro. But you're <laughs> looking, man. It, it, your community it says a whole lot, and all the the, the company that you keep because everybody that I've known that work with you for many years, they all have great things to say about you. Nothing. I bad. appreciate that. Thank and you. You always been one of those dudes. To always, uh, you were always around. You know, helping all, all of us. And and uh, I love seeing you. Uh, you know, mentor the younger guys. You know, I'm trying, man. And I'm it's, trying. And it's you dope know? to see the different generations. And I just, I, I wish you the best, bro. Man, I, this is gonna be amazing, man. I know 2022 is gonna be even better for thank you, brother. You. I already I, can see it. Well, thank you for having me. And I, thank y'all. Thank y'all. All, all y'all. Thank you so much. I, I. I I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I just want to just play some music and make people happy. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of the day. That's, that's all I want to do. It's <laughs> <laughs> there, so there's a, there's a turntable set up over there. I don't know. If these guys want to hang out, we can definitely plug in and play for them. Well, you guys want to hear Jose mix? Yeah, we, we can do. I mix every day. Just catch me on my Twitch. <laughs> I just wanted to come here and talk. That's and so dope, man. But thank you. Get, uh, can you give all your, your social? Uh, it's simple. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. DJ Jose Mullins. Uh, simple. Simple, simple. Oh, but if you want to buy my T-shirt, yes, my, plug my that. T-shirt, plug that. Beatsforhope.com. Beats the number four hope.com. Big shout out to Beatsforhope. Yes. Dot com. I love what they're doing over there, man. I, I the, the only re- the, the main reason why I work with them is because they give back to the community. Yep. Yep. That's the you know uh, yeah I mean yeah I make a little money off of it so th- so today but you know at the end of the day they give back to the they community. they do give back to the community and that's great the, great and organization that's the main reason why I, I I work with them and kick in you know and you know I, I support them so. yeah that's awesome man well thank you so much thank I want to thank again Chef Eddie Campos Eddie Campos Chef V V what up man come on uh, give out your all your socials.
A underscore Wevel underscore Food Creations. I'll tag him. Instagram. Don't worry, I'll tag him. Yes. I'll tag him. <laughs> Please tag me. And, and then we have V over at. I am V's Sweet Treat, so it's V S underscore Sweet. It's the truth, people. This is the <laughs> truth. <laughs> underscore and treat. Treats, man. Well, thank you guys so much for this one. 808 thing. Beats, man! 808 Beats! Yeah, hey. man, 808 Beats! Come here, brother. Come here, man. I want to thank you, dude. Since yeah. we started this show, you've been, like, you've been, I, mean, beats, I appreciate man. you you've been supporting us. Hey, uh, I saw some pictures of your backyard, so I, I want to talk to you. We're going to have to do oh, something. Right. Right. We're going to have to do it out there. To We're going to come out. We're going to have to do it on a weekend, though, yeah, sure. so we can do it big, you know? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. Scotty Fox, you're next, bro. I'm gonna send you some. Scotty Fox! I'm gonna text you when, right when we finish the show, bro. <laughs> We're gonna get this going. Mr. Jose Melendez, muchísimas gracias, papá. Thank, Thank you so much, you, brother. Appreciate God bless it. you, man. Yo, right. really quick, man. I remember. How's your son doing, bro? My son is. How old is he? My son is 27. No way. Yeah, my son is 27. <laughs> uh, living out in Utah, he went to a Weber State out there. Yes. Where Damian Lillard got, uh, you know, uh, drafted from and whatnot. So there's a big whole Damian Lillard, you know, work shipping room <laughs> <laughs> but yeah my my son i went to go i finally went to go see him last week for his nice. birthday after not seeing him for over a year and a half yeah, so yeah, it, was, yeah. it was great so yeah awesome man yeah. well it's all about family man right 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 thank you to the the community uh, uh of your crazy fans man. <laughs> I, I love you guys and I, I i hope to rock with you guys again on, on the stream yeah or, absolutely or we're gonna have to do an old school uh party yeah yeah let's do it and let's we'll invite it. all our all our we'll, friends we'll, we'll, stream, we'll stream from here we'll invite everybody to come over here and we'll, yeah we'll absolutely do something. stream from here yeah, yeah absolutely hey everybody thank you so much i love thank all y'all thank you so much i appreciate y'all even when you're talking shit i love y'all i love y'all <laughs> fix you're the shit. mic <laughs> Man, <laughs> fix your own damn mic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tay, what you got going for us before? You have anything to say before we out? Soap Parlor Wednesdays. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We can, we can. Oh, come on. <laughs> In my eyes. With that, guys, we're out of here. Peace. We're getting personal around here, man. <laughs>